Hi, my name is Andrew Broughton. I live in Airdrie, Alberta, and I've been doing live sound my whole life. My current and latest gig is uh, Rain, a tribute to the Beatles, touring show. Been with them for 11 years, and we'd probably still be out right now if it wasn't for COVID. I'm also a computer programmer. I enjoy software that does automation, control systems, things like that. My latest work has to, has to do with controlling mixers over the internet. I've also written some companion modules for controlling Yamaha and Allen and Heath consoles. And uh, yeah, like that. I was interested in learning more. And uh, if you're interested in anything I'm doing, Check me out at www.checkcheck12.com. That's all spelled out in letters C H E C K C H E C K O N E T W O. That's my site, and uh, thanks for listening. Hi, my name is Iris. Um, currently, I am part of the in-house staff at the Omni Champions Beat outside Orlando, Florida. I've done a bit of everything from theater to radio, television, live events. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in theater, and my first job was in radio, so you never know where you're going to end up in this. I am part of this community because I believe in education, and during this time, I believe Everyone can improve their knowledge to get more gigs and do more things and just be more flexible in the new whatever it is we're going into. But I appreciate you're here. I hope you learned something and have fun watch the show. Hi, my name is Adam Berlin. I'm from originally from Queens, New York, and now I live in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, my work includes in the AV world is mainly all video, such as video tech, utility, steady cam, ca camera op, uh, and projection. Um, well, I'm well versatile in the video world, as you so, as I said. Um, the reason I started this industry is because of music. I'm very you know, music oriented. I love music a lot and I got a lot of different visuals. Um, why, why I enjoy this show is more about, you know, ed the education and spreading the word of how, how to do things and um, spreading my knowledge to others is always a lot, uh, enlightening for me. And I'd like to pay back in return. And I hope you guys enjoy the show. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of AV Educates AV Tech Talks. I want to thank you for being here so much with us on the AV Tech Talks panel and on Facebook and everywhere else that you're watching us. So let's go into some of these house rules. We go live to Facebook every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can get notifications by when we go live by following the AV Educate page on Facebook. And while you're at it, join the AV Educate group. We'll drop the link in the comments. If you want to join the Zoom room by texting 407-504-7690. Again, that number is 407-504-7690. This number is only used for our panelists and you won't receive any spam texts from this number, but you will receive weekly invites to the Zoom room. We're opening the rooms at 6.30 p.m. Eastern and we close the doors at 6.55. But keep in mind, panelists have to participate and have to keep their cameras on during the talk. Moving forward, Due to the nature of streaming, there's a bit of a delay between when we say in our Zoom room and when it hits Facebook. So when making comments or asking questions, please provide some context. The user interface becomes more sleek and this will be lead to more meaningful engagement. Now be the sharpshooter in the room. No questions are too basic. A basic mission is to help through knowledge. People move from stagehand to technician. 
Chances are that others have the same questions you do, so please ask away. At the same time, we welcome comments and input on the topic at hand. So don't hold back that great topic or that correction when one of us says something inaccurate. Now, we don't know everything. We are human. We don't claim to know everything. We may discuss or show the way we do something, and that doesn't mean it's the only way, but it's the way we found that works for one of us. If you have another way that's easier or yields better results, please share that with everybody. The whole session is a live Q&A. Our questions will be discussed, the topics for about an hour, and then we'll move to more about a round table discussion. There's no formal Q&A section. Again, the whole session is a live Q&A, so don't wait until the end to ask your questions or to make your comments. And finally, a shameless plug. Please follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram so we can grow bigger and collaborate with even more amazing people just like you. That's all I got, guys. Back to the main room, back to Zoom, and back to you all in Facebook land. Again, thank you for being here, thank you for watching, and thanks for sharing. Welcome back to AV Tech Talks. Thanks for joining us. How's everyone doing tonight? Um, we have a, a different kind of show tonight, a special show. Uh, it's our OBS face-off between uh, Chris Brown, Bodie, the Toxic Biowolf, and Rocco DeSanti, the other Lone Star. Uh, Omar, why don't you tell us uh, what's going on tonight? So tonight we're doing an AV, I'm sorry, an OBS face-off on, on AV Tech Talks. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my little icon. I wanted to compete with these guys just a little bit and as far as it comes to designing stuff. So I created our own kind of AV World uh, gamer tag. So hopefully the audience likes it because I, I spent some time creating this. And I'm calling it, and if you guys have noticed some of the name drops the last few weeks, I'm calling it the AV Hero. I uh, created this for the community, so I will give this out to you guys once we're done here. I don't know if it's available for use or not, but I, I purchased it, and you guys are willing to use it for whatever you'd like. Uh, but again, welcome to the main event you've all been waiting for right here on AV Tech Talks. This is the OBS challenge between Toxic Biowolf and the Lone Star. The rules are simple. The OBS operators are going to have four challenges, three judges, two MCs, and one winner. Challenges are simple. Challenge one is starting up Zoom. So we're going to ask for a simple challenge, give it about five minutes to set up Zoom so that we can see their screens as they're completing these challenges. The first one is already semi done, so we're just going to go through a little quick work through with them uh, and we'll introduce you who the judges are and kind of go on that. Challenge number two is setting up the intro look. So what we want to do is use OBS to do some of the original looks that we're used to seeing right now in the streaming world. So again, you can see some of my descriptions there, but that look is created just to look similar to what you'd see in a broadcast channel with a lower third. Just and to stop you real quick, if you're moving slides, the slides are not transitioning. Oh, I am. I'm so sorry. So I wasn't transitioning slides. I apologize for that. That's totally my fault. This is a operator error. Uh, so again, welcome to the main event you'll have been waiting for here on the AV Tech Talks. Uh, the third one here will be the rules are simple. Two OBS operators, four challenges, three judges, two MCs, and one winner. On top of that, we will have, uh, here's a slide, sorry, for the challenges. There's four challenges in total, although you only see three here, and I'll give you an example of why in one second. Uh, challenge number one is, is setting up the Zoom so that we can see not only the operator's screens as they're doing these and being judged on it by ourselves, but also so that we can choose the final product and they will be judged on that as well by our judges. The challenge number two is the intro look, what we've been seeing most likely or most commonly uh, in the industry right now, which is to be just themselves with a lower third and an icon of their choosing. We have sent them a template with some icons and they also have to use a couple of their own as well for this challenge. Now, the third challenge is to present our look. This is another look that we use very commonly in the streaming world as of right now, which will be a PowerPoint in one side, an image on the other side, I'll throw up this little quick intro of what I'm looking for just in case the challengers aren't aware. So for challenge number three, when I'm calling it the presenter look, I'm looking for something similar to this. You're able to modify this however you like, but essentially a background, a foreground, an image of yourselves, lower thirds with a title of something and a side of an icon. Whether the ones who sent to you as are from us or whether you have your own, you're willing to do whichever you'd like. And now the fourth challenge, and again, this is how we bring you guys and involve you in the community. The fourth challenge is what will be from you, the audience out in the Zoom, Facebook, Zoom and Facebook community. We'll be asking you to submit your best ideas for a fourth challenge. You have about 40 minutes to submit those. We will, we will tally those up and present them to the judges and we will decide which one it is. So for ourselves and the operators, it is a mystery to everybody involved. Uh, you guys get to decide what that is by submitting your best challenges to bring to the operators. 
to do on the fly. They will have 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how complex we think it is. Uh, we'll find that on the fly. Moving forward on this deck, we will score based on three factors. Time. Every, every challenge will be timed, so they'll be complete that on a timing manner. Signal flow or steps to accomplish. How they're able to accomplish this within OBS, whether they use third-party apps or OBS itself directly. And third will be creativity. The final product of all this is we expect you to be able to do it all off of one button click, whether using Stream Deck or your keyboard or hotkeys or anything like that. We expect the final action to be done based off of a single click when the audience calls for it or when our judges or MCs call for it. Now, I would like to bring in our first judge, which is Felix Pike, owner of the Full Pike. Full Pike will be the judging based on creativity and execution of the final look. Uh, and he'll do that as well live with you guys. And he'll be also a part of our MC crew. Our second judge and MC for the night will be Disa Cameron, producer from FMA. Disa Cameron will judge you based on your signal flow and third party applications used to achieve your final look. Those are our two judges. And finally, our third judge and the most important judge of the night will be you in the audience. You are our most honest and trustworthy judges, the AV Educate and the AV Tech Talk community. Your judge will also be factored in, which will give us a total of who will be the final winner based on tonight's event. Now, that's all I have for the time being. I will go back to Ed here to help us launch this and get ready for our OBS Challenge kickoff. Great. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be, I think, a lot of fun. Um, we will be dropping some links in the chat, both on Facebook and into the Zoom webinar uh, to a Google form where you will simply vote for if Chris won the challenge or if Rocco won the challenge. Uh, and then those will be able to bring the results in. <clears throat> so when you see those links, there's going to be four different ones. They'll pop up after each challenge. Uh, just click on that, go vote. Uh, the quicker, the better. So we can uh, we can tally those votes and, uh, and see what's going on. Uh, otherwise, Omar, I think we should um, we should uh, kick this into into gear. Perfect, perfect. So I'd like to once again introduce our operators, which is Christopher Brown, who is also known as a toxic bio wolf. He's saying we had everybody there. What up? One of our OBS operators tonight and the challenges for tonight. And our second person for tonight will be Rocco De Santos, which is the other lone star, who will be our second competitor for the night. I introduce both of you guys to the main stage and start off with challenge number one, which is to create a Zoom look. Uh, or what we want to see, which is essentially, we want to give you five minutes from the time that the uh, time comes up. Mr. Armstrong will be uh, keeping us on time. Our judges, which will be, I'm sorry, our judges and MCs, which will be Disa Cameron and Felix Pike, will be giving you a five minute timer, or we will be giving you five minute timer, apologies, and they'll be judging you and talking over it. What we want to see is first, we want to see your screen show up on your camera for Zoom so that we can manipulate that as well on our end. And we also want to be able to see the final product or what you send out of the program. So we'll give you guys five minutes from that at my time frame. If I can get an okay from my judges and MCs, uh, my time frame is 7.15. Is that correct for you guys? Standing by. Standing by. So 7.15, you guys have five minutes from this moment now to be able to show me on your Zoom screens what I want to see, which is your desktop to see what you're doing in OBS, and as well as be able to transition from once that is done to when the judges call for it to see your final product of what that is done. And essentially the final product will be able to see your screenshot on one and able to see your final product or your program screen out on the other side. Uh, and we want to see that on, again, one click. So we'll ask for you guys to come up and we will say, can we please see your screen? You'll click on screen. And then we'll ask, can we please see your program out? And you'll click on your program out. Now, please begin. 7.15 is the time frame. now. We will go to a four shot of the judges and you guys showing us your setups of your screens and your final product out. We will talk about these as we go and ask you some questions on the back end. Let's Five do minutes this. on the clock. Okay. Do we have any like Jeopardy music? I was going to say, we need the cyber dance. <laughs> I would choose the cyber dance right now. So uh, the point the part that I don't understand is the one click thing. So like I, I, I just, I'm showing my, my OBS so I can program already. 100%. And then you want to be able to see the output of this OBS. Yes. So it's actually two clicks because Correct. I got to turn off the, yes, but yeah, so it's done. Oh, okay, done. So that took you less than a minute. All right. And how's Bodhi doing? I'm done. That, that took them less time than it took me to pull up their shot. So that's, uh, that's so, pretty awesome. Uh, so, okay. Well, there was, there was some pre- pre-work done with this. We, Bodhi and I both installed a, a portable OBS so that we could run two 
instances of OBS simultaneously, one being able to capture the blank OBS, then the other OBS we'll be using to write stuff with. So that's great. So we have, so, four, we have technically four minutes, right? So, so for instance, so just to elaborate on that, for instance, how it's going right now is I have, you see my screen share, I am using my OBS that I normally use for my stream, bringing in the portable OBS up here on a virtual cam into my stream OBS. So that's what's going on, and that's how we're able to do this, is I've used my original OBS that I run all my programming off of, have everything run as a virtual cam grabbing the OBS portable. Excellent. Okay, so I did actually did it differently than he did. There you go. So that's interesting. That's why I explained my way to do it, so that way you could explain yours, being as we have a little bit of time. So let me do this. Let me have okay, Felix. So my apologies. My apologies. Let's do this. Let me have Felix start off first with. Um, we'll, we'll have Felix start off with Chris real quick. Uh, I'll have Felix ask you guys a couple questions. How you got to your uh, final look? How you guys got there? What you did on your end uh, to accomplish that look? And uh, Felix, I'll let you take the lead. Well, I yeah, I really like the the pip look um, versus the what I guess they call the studio look, which is the uh, preview and program uh, look. Um, Rocco has been a little more uh, creative with his uh, his camera layer there, obviously. <laughs> Flying yeah. out there. I can go wherever I want. There you go. Uh, <laughs> okay, you can, stay there. you can stay there the whole gig. That'd be perfect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that won't be distracting at all. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, apart from that, um, yeah, uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, give the, I'll tip the hat only slightly to Rocco this time. Over to you, Disa. Oh, gosh. Um, well, I have to say it's a personal preference. Uh, my colleagues all want to get me a T-shirt that says, get it in the gate, because I am obsessed with monitoring what's in the preview as well as the output monitor. So that is why I'm siding with Rocco, because he has somehow figured out what I'd like to see without me asking him. Um, it has nothing to do with him flying around the screen. Yeah, Bodhi can swap between that though. He just, has, he, has just, he, he, he can just press a button and, and show yeah, preview. It'll, okay. It'll go into studio mode. Okay, so he, preview you on have program. to press two buttons though. Well, it's, yeah, you can, you can swap between it. You can just swap between preview it's and just uh, studio, studio you know. mode on and off. I, yeah. I'm not using my preference of not using studio mode was so that way you guys can get a better image of what the product looks like as I'm doing it. Cause you'll be able to see me do my sources and my scenes as I'm going on. Whereas I understand the use for preview and program as in the video world and seeing what's actually being output to what you're doing. Uh, for me, it was just using the personal preference of so everybody could see better what was going on. That's all. So I like yeah. this. I'll probably be swapping between the two. Getting heated here. I like this. I like this. So, so listen, while we wait for the Facebook community to give their final verdict on it, it seems like we have two for Rocco right now. Uh, I still haven't heard from Facebook yet about who they feel has won. But while we do that, Bodie, can you real quick talk me through the steps you took to get your OBS look to feed into Zoom real quick? What were the steps you took? How did you do it? How did you accomplish it? Okay. So what I did is I used my original stream OBS, my original copy I have. Um, and I went and created another scene. From that, I did a display capture for the OBS portable and a virtual cam webcam to the portable OBS. And then I have my actual webcam right here just pipped in and layered over it. So that way, when we were in gallery view, I can make myself bigger and just bring it in smaller for when we're doing the challenges. Excellent, excellent. I see that very well. And I also see that you have audio embedded in yours. So is your audio coming through OBS or is it coming My through Zoom? audio is not coming through OBS. It all is coming through Zoom, but technically it's all coming through Mixer anyway. So my Mixer feeds it all the way into Zoom. So I have a GoXLR Mixer that allows me to do all my wacky and crazy <laughs> stuff for when I'm streaming and things like that. And that's where all my audio is routed through. And that is what is actually being fed to OBS as well as Zoom, as well as the only way I hear anything coming from my computer at all. Awesome, I like, awesome. I like that a lot, that you use a mixer to like drop in different, uh, that's what I do. I basically got my DJ mix, Welcome. my headset, and, uh, <laughs> and, a, and a VOG mic here through the, through the console, which you deal with the mix minus thing a bit on Zoom. We all know that. But uh, for a bed of music underneath, which music is, oh, there's another little tip, music's very important to me uh, in any style of presentation. So uh, let's see what happens. Excellent, excellent. So Felix, it seems like, are you still 
you still with uh, Team uh, Rocco here, or are you are you are you are you transitioning a little bit more to? Uh, I'm I'm, to Chris? I'm. That was a really hard split for me. It's, a really it's hard split. split for me too. Honestly, like okay. that the little trivial he has to hit one more button is is the only thing I could really point out. Uh, okay. Okay. So it, signal. It was phone. one button. Remember? That's that's the rule. Well, none of us, well, can, not myself or Rocco, can <clears throat> hit one button in order to. Uh, switch between scenes. It's always two buttons that's going to be required in OBS, unless through program, unless program through Stream Deck, and, or in his case, he uses. Uh, I just lost it. It's at the tip of my. I tongue. use everything. I use I use Lorian board. I use Stream Deck. I use BitFocus Companion, and I use my own custom solutions that I've written. So yeah, yeah. so so go ahead, Rocco. Walk me through your setup real quick. How did, how were you able to get that same look that we're looking for here on Zoom? How did so it's OBS similar to what Bodhi did. But so like the, the idea was that we wanted to be able to show us working on OBS and be able to show the output of OBS, right? So Correct. this is portable OBS right here. And we were having questions about what portable OBS is. It's a way of running OBS so that you can have as many installations as you want on, on your computer. And I'll go through with how to do that later on tonight. It's a really cool trick. So I have my normal OBS. I'm going to bring it over here. We're going to get like, um, this is my normal OBS. And you can see I'll have my scene collection right here with all these different scenes. And I have this scene that just captures this middle monitor. And this is this one right here, right? And so this is my normal OBS. And, it ha and since version 26, OBS is shipped with what's called virtual cam. And what it, it emulates a webcam on a Windows machine. By the way, Mac users, there's an OBS beta out right now that has virtual cam as well. And so the next release of OBS will have virtual cam for Mac, but the beta that's out right now for Mac, you can have that now. Um, and so... I'm capturing this right here. Then the idea is when I want to show you the output of this, I'll just turn off my virtual cam on my main OBS and then I'll start my virtual cam here. And then I'll be able to show you, show the output of, I'll be able to sw swap between the two outputs like that. Got it. I like it. I like it. So let me ask you guys one more thing. Well, you know, we, we did it. We passed the five minute mark. We got about one more minute left to pass in the additional five minutes. Can I get you guys to import whatever image you would like? And just show me what your screen, your program out would look like on our end. Because I haven't seen that yet. I understand we got the, sure. the first look done, yeah. but let me see your program outs. Yeah, sure. Where's that, uh, anyone, with your hero, your AV hero guy? Uh, he is in the, I'll bring him in. yeah, he's in the folder. Yeah, I got him. Yep. I sent you multiple color formats. And then here's a fun little trick. If you click on that right, the guy right there. And if you just put control F, it fits the screen automatically. Oh. Not a lot of people know about that. Transition. And then I'll just stop my virtual cam here and start my virtual cam here. And there we go. That's the output of my OBS. Okay. And are we seeing, are you guys seeing, I see, yeah. yep, I see one. Then if I want to go back, I'll stop the virtual cam on that op on the portable OBS and start it on my main one, and I'm back. And I could automate that, actually, if I wanted to make it one button press using OBS WebSockets, because virtual cam does have a endpoint in OBS WebSockets. So I could just send an OBS WebSockets command to my main OBS using a specific port. So, like, my port on my main OBS is 4444, and on portable OBS, I'm using 4455. So I can send different commands to multiple OBS instances from one source to be able to start and stop virtual cam. So if you really wanted it to be one button press, you want me to go through the steps of that? I could. It's kind of getting into the weeds, though, if you ask me. Not go there just yet. <laughs> yeah, no. So, we don't want to make it too complicated. Go ahead, Ed. So, Omar, do we want to take a look at the, uh, the voting from... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. If you have that already, please bring it up. I do. So now at this point, the voting has stopped for any of the, uh, the sites. And that's what we are looking at. If you guys can see that. Let me uh, make sure that our audience. By a landslide. So it looks like on Facebook, the audience favored Chris here. But our judges already gave two points awarded to uh, Rocco over here. So. I gotta say, challenge one, unfortunately for for everybody, um, challenge one was won by Rocco. Does anybody disagree with that with that verdict? Nope. Even though uh, even though Facebook and Zoom are more people, they only count as one vote. So that is where we are at. 
Um, I saw a question in the Q&A like, that asked about if there's any limitations with portable OBS. No, it just it runs the exact same way as regular installation. There's, there's very few, there's a couple of things you have to figure out with uh, plugins that can be confusing, but for the most part, it's, it's fine. Really identical, exactly. It's, you can do everything you can with it. It just allows you to build a different scene source that doesn't affect your other OBS instances that you're using. And you can actually have an infinite amount of portable OBSs on your computer because you can, what it is is renaming the target destination on the shortcut. And you this, like for instance, mine is just named OBS Portable. Uh, you can do Portable 1, Portable 2, Portable 3, Portable 4, and just keep going and going and going and have 25 different instances. And then you can take all your different OBS instances and plug them into your original instance via virtual cam. So that way, whatever's being shared on the other OBSs, plug right in. Yeah, and it's a really great way to test out betas without committing to them. That too. So you can, yes. And, and then also, if you wanted to, you, can, you could actually install OBS onto a USB drive and it would run off a USB drive. So long as whatever computer you plug it into is the same letter. I like so it. Like so when you plug it into one computer, it's like it's like G, and then you plug it into another computer, it's G. Then it would still work. I like it, gentlemen. So let's let's dive into those questions a little bit later, just so we can continue to go. Um, I like that. I'll make a note of that as well for the audience in case anybody's curious about portable OBS and how we had set that up ahead of time. OBS, right? So I want to continue on the challenge number yeah, we can go two. Through real quick at the end, on how to how to install it. Of course, no, for sure, for sure. Yep. So challenge number two, I want to create an intro look. Uh, and what I'm asking for is to create a standard broadcast intro. Uh, look with the lower third of yourself and the AV Hero icon on the lower right-hand side. Now, I am not, um, not going to hold you guys to using the AV Hero icon. You're welcome to use your own if you have those e more easy. Hey, Omar, we're not seeing anything on your, uh, your camera. Interesting. Are you not seeing the challenge page on my camera? No, the we challenge? just see your name. Oh, no. So. Is that our next challenge? Get it working? <laughs> Unfortunately for me, yeah, I guess. So, where is? So while Omar, I think I now? figured it out. Yeah, I figured it out. Great. All right. So challenge number two, man. I, listen, every operator error has been on me. So, good thing for that, right? Oh, stand by. Sorry. There we go. So I'm I'm gonna make one, but then at the end, I also want to show one that I've already made that took a lot longer than the time that we have. No worries. No um, worries. So challenge number two, it will be the intro look, right? All, all I want to see is a kind of you guys, a lower third of your names, right? You can use either your real names or your or your Twitch names. Um, and then an icon and the lower third hand side. And essentially, this will be a build, right? So we got the first thing we want to get done for the audience in Facebook land. And now I want to see the second part of this, which would be if I wanted to bring in an audience person or a member or somebody who's in my room, let's say, or if the same streaming somebody into my OBS uh, platform, I want to see... That person show up on the screen, which essentially for this example will be you guys, just to make it a little bit quicker. If you can, I will add a challenge to you for bonus points. If you'd like, I will give you one additional point uh, as, a, as an additional to whatever the judges and the audience decides. If you can bring in one of the Zoom people into the OBS, okay? And if you can bring that person in, do a lower third of that person's name that you see down there and an icon of, of your choosing, I will give you guys an additional point so that if it is, let's say, two to one as it was this time, uh, we will have a tie, or we may have a landslide of a victory. So again, it is a look Are of a bringing them in any any way we want. Any way is that like, to be a panelist or like anybody from anybody from the yeah. Zoom call? Any sizing, it doesn't matter. Just craft them in however you'd like to, um, or you could do yourselves if you want to. If you want to save time, I'll give you again five minutes to accomplish this. Uh, it is now seven thirty. You have to seven thirty-five to accomplish that. We'll put the two. We'll put the four shot back up. We'll let the judges kind of talk over to see what you guys are doing and, and interact with you. And we will we will wait for five minutes total time to bring you guys in. So again, either a shot of yourselves, a live shot of yourselves, or a shot of somebody on Zoom while you're building this. A lower third that I want to come in at some point, and also the icon as well on the program outside. Five minutes on the clock. Awesome. Five minutes on the clock. Okay. Cue the Jeopardy music. <laughs> and so Omar, I actually went to a, to a two shot just so it'll be a little bit um, clearer for the audience uh, on um, on Zoom. I was getting some reports that it was a little fuzzy. I'm going to see if I can work on that. If I'm going to, I'm going to try doing it a different way just to make it a little better for them. 
<clears throat> you know, and I noticed whoever's spotlit is very clear, and then the other three of us were blurry. Yeah, so I'm gonna well, whoever's let me see speaking can, at the time. Yeah, let me see if I can uh, if I can fix that up. Okay, so Bodhi's got some layers started here. So just to stop you there real quick, Bodhi, you're using the presenter look, which is challenge number three. Challenge number two, we're just looking for a single shot of either you, yourself, or somebody from the Zoom panel. With the lower third and logo. The lower third. Correct. Stand lower third and logo. Number one. Stand by lower third. <laughs> So, so what, and go. there you go. I, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion, Felix and, and Diza. What do you guys think about what's going on right now? How do you see these guys building it out on the OBS screens? Anything you see familiar to yourselves or anything very different? I see a I'm lot just, of overlays. Yeah, <laughs> I see some layering going on. So I'm interested to see what transpires in the next 30, 40 seconds. We've got some color selection going here. Rocco, perhaps with that background. Oh, with that background, I feel like I'm back in like a uh, grade school taking a photo. It's very Tron, like the very the first version. Oh yeah, I was thinking very very Tron as well. And I'd love to hear the three release. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I was feeling Tron with that as well. What about the panelists? You guys have any any thoughts so far? I'm agreeing with the Tron thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's looking cool. Um, so looks like Rock was adding a little place to put his. Lower third in. Interesting choice, though. He's doing a lower third on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side, which is what I'm used to doing myself. I'm curious to see where the outcome comes into on that. Yeah, and I, I'm seeing on Facebook, sorry about the if it's low res. This is a uh, part of what happens using Zoom and doing captures. Um, so this is where Roka's, Roka's going to have me beat on this one. Because I don't use virtual cam instances the way he does, my webcam will only present on one monitor and one instance of it. All right, we're at two minutes, two minutes left on the clock. Oh, interesting, Bodhi. So you brought up a point. Is this a limitation of OBS itself or is this something nope, that- this is a limitation of my configuration and how I am set up to run. Understood, understood. So for your scenario, just to speed this up on your end, you're welcome to use an image of any sort you'd like to do the same set. So interesting, Roko is looking like it's using a lower third template. Is this something that's in OBS itself, or is this a third party app that you're using? I'm very curious about that. They're yeah, all built in tools in OBS. Okay. And then if I want to bring in a guest, uh, I would like to private message somebody, though, a link. Sure. I think we can add on the four minutes we saved from the previous challenge to this challenge. If uh, so, I was about who can to I say, send can this to? Him, can we give him a couple more minutes here? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Anderson, do you want to? Can you add four more minutes? We'll add on for what we what we oh, saved from time. The last time. All right. Let's, who do we have? Ori. Ori, can you help me out? Sure thing. There you go. Click on that link. Add your camera to that. Follow the instructions. Interesting. So Bodhi here is now also making a lower third using something internal from OBS that I'm not aware of. I like this. All right. We have three arbitrary minutes left on the clock. Thank you for that, sir. And just for color commentary, literally, I'm assuming that uh, you're able to match brand standard guidelines that a client might have when you're making these. Absolutely. So yeah, it looks like it looks like Chris over here has, has done himself with his colors for his brand. And I would say Lone Star has also done some similarities with his branding as well. Um, so that's another limitation on my setup is I can't grab the zoom on my setup. By the way, this has worked with the, with the branding police, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you must have worked with Coke. Coca-Cola and their Coca-Cola red. No, it's a quarter tone lime green Neo, not <laughs> third tone. Jesus. Don't you know the hex color of this? I can't work under these conditions. <laughs> I, I have the cyber dance ready whenever you're ready. <laughs> we all know that tune, no? I do not, I apologize. So it looks like 
it looks like in here I'm seeing Ori's camera pop up on Rico's side already here as he's fiddling away here in his OBS program. And it looks like uh, Bodhi's going to go ahead and take in his screenshot or his uh, iMac shot and push that in there. Well, I'm going to do something a little different, actually, now that I think about it. So just give me one second. You're going to okay. see Adrian's. How much, how much time we got left on the clock? Just a few minutes. Right, one minute and right. 12 Bodie. arbitrary seconds. Bodie's Ooh. looking pretty rad here. I have nope. to say. Ooh. No pressure, no pressure. I didn't even see him doing any of this fun stuff. <laughs> well, the, the the good thing is we get to talk about it a little bit afterwards. But I, I'm I'm I want to make sure that the Facebook audience is out there right now. We have about 20, 20 plus people watching. Don't forget to follow that link again, guys. Uh, let me, post, uh, let yeah, me we'll, put it out there. We'll post momentarily for you guys to start voting on your on your favorite. Oh, what happened to Bodhi's side? Did we lose your? Uh... Oh, there we go. Thirty seconds, three zero. Ah. So, let me hear your inputs, D DJ. What are you thinking right now? How, how's your How's your mind being settled? I'm just really curious. Like, I see a lot of windows opening and closing, and people quickly doing things. And uh, so, just for I being that Rocco, seconds, being that Rocco still Rocco still going. What I'm going to kind of explain here is because the limitations on my personal computer. Um, I do not have virtual cam instances set up to where I can pull in my image on a second source of OBS. So what I did for myself on this one is I used my personal logo, created a name template, and in the bigger image that you can see is actually a clip replay of my Twitch that's auto-populated. Auto so it's a browser source linked to what's a... Uh, website called Athenoscope. So as I'm playing and doing my things, it automatically captures clips of kills and things like that. So it, I embedded that in the source as the image webcam of whoever else, we, a panelist that we were bringing in or anything else that we were bringing in because of the personal limitations of my setup at this point. So that's what I've done. Sorry, did, did we just run out of time? I apologize. Yeah, he called. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Time's way out. Okay, so time's up, guys. So I'd like to stop real quick. And I'll, again, I'll let Felix and Deza take over this. And who do you guys want to talk to first about seeing the final product? Deza, after you. Oh gosh, putting me putting me on the spot here. I'm like trying to help. I'll take it if you want. <laughs> um, sorry, can you guys show me again? I'm I'm defaulting. Yeah, let's go to that two screen look again. Yeah. Uh, Gabodi and Rocco side by side. Let me see. Mm. Sorry, Ed. I know you were asking me to do some pinning, but I, I can't do it right. No worries. No worries. So stand by. Let me get them. Okay. So now we should see both of them side by side. <laughs> There's a comment saying we're supposed to act like an actual client and scream, where is it? I want it right now. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, that's not exactly how I do it. I just keep asking for the same thing over and over again and get a little less nice every time I ask for it. But, you know, something that comes with a decade and a half of experience. And the, the voting links are on the Facebook and the Zoom for challenge number two. So you can start getting your votes in now. Perfect. So, so DJ, who do you want to see first to give your your final judgment? Uh, let's see Bodhi. Bodhi, go ahead. We want to see your program out sent to full screen. Okay. I, I want to see what your final product is. Stand by. Let me, uh, let me, I'm going to take him full screen just so everybody gets the best viewing experience. Uh, cause we're getting complaints about oh. the uh, quality. Oh, my apologies guys. So there we go. We should be full screen. Lock everything down. You good, Bodhi, or do you need a sec? I'm just trying to get it sent to the screen, but when I go to pull it up, it's only pulling my video and bedding up. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So are, yep. did you miss timeline and not accomplish the final look? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Uh, is that your final answer? If, you're, if, you're, if you want to well, go with that answer, we, we will go to the next. Yeah, because I can't get it to pull up the entire scene got it got it okay so 
Hey, let's see what Rocco has. Rocco, let's see what you got, brother. Stand by. Sure. Let me... Solid attempt, though, Bodhi. There we go. Rocco should be full screen. Except... So this is my look. I used NDI to get my camera over from my main OBS to my portable OBS instance. That way the camera could be on both sides. There's probably a little bit of a lag, so you're not so you think some lag there. I brought Ori in over WebRTC using OBS Ninja. Uh, I did scene nesting so that I could have these different looks. I could have me be full screen without a lower third. I could have Ori be full screen without a lower third. I have this two shot up with lower thirds. If I had more time, I would have also added single shots with lower thirds. I'm getting it cut off at the bottom though. Uh, that's just Zoom. I think if you can that? see your mute and stop video strip at the bottom, I'm, that's what's stopping it. Otherwise, oh, I can see he's filled the screen. Let me see. I'll yeah, I'm, see, I'm seeing that he yeah. filled the screen. Thank you. Yes. And then I added a custom logo that I use that animates in kind of silly. It's not that amazing. Um, I could actually show you what I, uh, a, a different version of this that is more complex. <laughs> that you can make if you have more time. Let's hold on that till the very end of this challenge. Though. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, OBS Ninja is amazing. It's a free tool. Uh, if you don't know about it, you should definitely look into it. It's, uh, it's improved drastically over the last six months. If you have looked at it a few months ago, look at it again. It's even better than it was before. Um, but it's a really easy tool to bring in people for these sort of things and to do it well. What now, was that cool uh, camera sizing command? As well, Rocco. Uh, I can go over a bunch of commands for you. So there. So if you want to edit transform, it's Control E. You, just, you know, have a source. You just press Control E. The edit transform thing will pop up. I have, I have this all on my stream deck. I have to look at them. Uh, reset transformer. Form Control R will reset the transform. Control F will go full screen. Control S will stretch to bounds. Uh, Control D will center the object. F2 will rename a source or a scene. Control home will move a source to the top of the list. Control N will bring it to the bottom of the list. Control up will move it up one. Control down will bring it down one. So those are some basic cool. Thank you. Yeah, shortcuts. Sure. So there are several one people thing that they would appreciate that too. One thing, uh, uh, Rocco. Just to uh, clarify, I was clicking on the wrong side to full screen it. That was my issue. So, uh, right. so, so, what do you want to try and show us again? Well, hold on, hold on. I, I think Ed's trying to bring up this. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, so, I was just going to say uh, one thing, though, that we are getting comments on the Facebook side is that NDI audio that we're getting is the the the, the out of sync. Uh, your sync just started to drift a bit, and then we're getting those cracks and pops that are uh, are notorious uh, NDI audio issues. I'm not sending audio with NDI right now. Really? Well, we are getting. No, I'm not. We are getting probably getting craps and pops from for other reasons, and it's probably has to do mostly with me having a crappy microphone. But um, I'm not be. actually using the NDI audio right now because I didn't want to like send dual audio. But right. this, if I were to stream from the second OBS, then it would be using the NDI audio. Gotcha. Uh, let me try this. Hold on. And then the I'm guessing the sync is out because you're running through two different OBSs, so there's more video processing than. The sync is out of, is out because you're hearing the audio that I'm saying to Zoom, and you're watching video that is going through two OBSs. Got it. Yep. That's so. That was to clarify for the people who were bringing it up on on Facebook. Yeah. The so the lag. maybe that will be better. I switched I switched my microphone stingies. Maybe that'll be a bit better. We'll see. Uh, yeah. It's, it doesn't sound crackly as bad. So. But that did sound like the, the typical thing you hear from NDI audio when when it's not behaving. And so, so F Felix, you had a judgment you wanted to pass? Um, if I can just see Bodhi's full screen again. Yep. I'm going to that right now. I can now. pin it, but... Okay. Now, Bodhi, you had this really cool layer going. I saw when you were working this together, you had a whole full screen thing under here, which had like... It looked like a, gr a neon green heartbeat or something like that, a pulse... Okay, so graphics. I didn't use that because that is my per. Okay, so what I was doing is I was that grabbing. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so I'll switch to it, but this isn't part of the challenge because this is something that I already have pre built. Okay. Um, this is what I use as my starting soon screen when I start my live stream. 
This is, so what this is right here is I went to this scene to grab right. this OBS layer. Uh, I don't know if you can, this OBS layer mm -hmm. for the video. I grabbed the um, web sock, the web source from it is what I did. Okay. So this is my starting soon screen. So all I did was go to this to grab the link for the video to send it to um, here to bring it in. Okay. So you can see the difference, like ab absolutely night and day. Uh, yeah, oh, you absolutely. Just, you just so, built this. Um, right. So this is a custom uh, panel background that I built right. uh, for myself. Has the stream starting, has my uh, insignia up there, uh, has my logo embedded behind it, has the yeah. smoke effects around it. Uh, the gradient is just an audio visualizer OBS plugin, and you can tell it where to grab the audio that you're trying to do from. So like, say for instance, if I go to my play screen here or my just chatting screen, you see the gradient underneath my mic. Mm -hmm. That is, um, again, that's the audio visualizer and I'm telling it to grab my mic. And that's why it moves up and down when I grab my mic. Cool. Uh, on this one, the starting soon screen is actually moving with the video audio. So that's what that is. It's a gradient of the video audio. Yeah. Um, so, but again, I just went to that one real quick to grab the uh, web source, the browser source a link from that so I can embed it into this one. Well, thank you for here. being so honest that that was a, a pre-made. <laughs> well, pre yeah, I, I built it, but it, what it is is the background that you're seeing is an image, then it's a voice, voice meter overlay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my own, like, okay, so if I go to my camera here, you'll see my camera right here. Yeah. I use that uh, overlay border. So if I grab my webcam and I move my webcam, see, it's just a, right. a overlay border that I've made. Mm -hmm. um, and that is what I use to make the overlay here with my logo and everything on it. Um, right. And then I embedded the video source inside of it. So Very cool. that's where that is. Okay. So yeah, here we hear two things. Um, I would have picked a much different font to reflect <laughs> your uh, what I see from your pre-made stuff. Um, <clears throat> Again, that is a window. custom font in Adobe. That is not a custom font inside OBS that I have not loaded in yet. Okay. Okay. Fair so that's enough. That's why it's different. Yeah. Um, just this this bright orange is throwing me way off. I would have just gone with a really dark background, so your logo and your screen would have blended more together. Because uh, you know, I I really hate hard edges, and and uh, Adisa mentioned before pips uh, drive her mad. Perhaps I understand that. These hard edges and the colors just don't really work together. But with your pre-made one, it's like gorgeous. It's like a so, really... So on this one, as Omar explained too, um, mm -hmm. this is my actual color scheme is the toxic green and the orange is my color scheme. Okay. If I would have had more time, I could have actually gone into the images and there is a filter property on the images that I could have rounded and blended the images off to where it would have done a gradient into the actual background. So everything right. would have gradiented in if I would have had more time to do that. Sure, sure. I've sure. also seen like the shadow look, which can be nice yes. too. Yep. Yeah, so and that's, that's again, personally what I would have done for my video embedment on this one. I would have done the shadow effect on the video embedment because it gradients behind the orange as well. And then for my image, I would have done a rounded image instead of the sharp corner. I would have rounded right. the image off. Right, right. Also with your webcam in the corner, I would have pulled that away from the hard corner a little bit just to leave, see a little orange, like frame it. A little bit. I know I'm kind of contradicting myself. I like frames. I don't like frames, but yeah. Yeah, the camera is just there, so you guys. There can we go. See me. Yeah. This wasn't part of my. This wasn't part of what I was trying to put in. This mm -hmm. is just. This is actually on my original instance of OBS. So this is. This is just here, so you guys can see me in the pimp. Yeah, I'm purely purely talking in terms of framing and composition here. That's all. And uh, I just like to. If you're going to do a hard edge, at least give it some sort of framing, like you did with that gray around the, uh, the the video output of your game there but um, like, i love it you sound like like a sommelier of picture in picture right now <laughs> <laughs> yes very beautiful but canon, i i do canon appreciate, green i notes, do appreciate uh, that feedback so that way when i start doing other instances i can use different color gradients and yeah. like you said how i have the color border around my uh my video here it would help me when I'm building other ones out to where if I do an abstract color, it helps me guide it better. So that yeah. I do appreciate that. Feedback. Yeah, sure. No, it's just a, a totally like yeah, a compositional thing. Like I just love blended stuff. If you're using multiple pictures and multiple frames, um, I just like it really blended and seamless in that regard. But um, thank you. 
Uh, so Ro- Felix, who's who's your uh, in your opinion who won this challenge? Well, I think I think Rocco um, stuck to um, more. Of, he used someone else for a start. Uh, in within his frame, and he had two lower thirds, and that was cool. Um, but I think I'm going to give this one to Bodhi. I think I just think it's more more captivating visually, um, despite my critique and want for gradients and blends and fancier, you know, composition of the screen. I, I'm going to give this one to Bodhi. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And and what about Diza? What what was your final verdict? It's it's really hard to choose. Like they're both so different. Rocco has very clean, black and white, neutral tones. He had a little bit of zhuzh, which I quite like, just a little je ne sais quoi with the slight animation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and he did bring in Ari's video as well. So it, it gives you a more realistic, like if, if Rocco was with me on a demo, I would definitely feel like I'm gonna make that sale on that piece of business. 100%. Um, and I, I, I do totally respect Bodhi's uh, visuals there. It's very loud and proud. Um, <laughs> but uh, through my lens and, and through what I would need in terms of support, I would have to side with Rocco. But that's really just my niche in the industry, right? Like I'm not no. on the gaming side. So it's, a, it's, it's 100% okay. Listen, it's, it's a tie. So right now it's a one to one. Uh, I'm going to go to Ed here real quick and see if we got any responses from. Uh, Facebook land to see who they thought was the winner of challenge number two. Facebook's going to break it. Wow. Well, mine was done. I just couldn't get it full screen. So I will say this, though, just to add it, this is still a tie. I did say that if we were able to bring in somebody who, from the panel, which we did, which um, Rocco did was able to bring somebody in who brought in Ori, uh, I would give them an extra point to try to make it a little bit more competitive. So technically, with this, we're still at a tie, two for two. All right. Um, awesome setup. It seems like, Chris, your only fault was timing. Um, clearly, you could do better than that. Um, timing was your biggest fault here. One of the big things in the industry is timing always because these things happen on the fly. I think you got tons of positive feedback. I think Rocco as well, you did tons of great things. I would love to dive into some of your setups uh, at the end of this as well about how you brought in Ori. That seemed to light up the, the Facebook chats a little bit here on how you accomplished that. So we can jump onto that a little bit later. Uh, just to carry forward here, guys, because we're at the... I think we're almost at the hour mark. We're about five minutes over to the hour mark. We got two more challenges left. I want to remind everybody, the fourth challenge is is on you, the community out there. I've already have one submission. I'm looking for a couple more. If not, we'll go with the submission we got. Uh, It was very good. Um, Although it may have been already sort of done, but um, we have one submission already uh, submitted. If you have any more, uh, please bring your feedback in. The only part we had uh, Rocco on that side was that from the Facebook community was the audio. So obviously this is a, a... on the fly thing, you guys are doing great when it comes to timing. So, you know, please don't take anything away from that. But I do want to move on to challenge number three. So now if you guys look into the folder that I sent you at 630, uh, in there is what we're going to call the presenter look. And the presenter look, I'm going to bring up as well into the screen for the audience to see, is what I'm looking for. This will be the most uh, standard kind of look that we're doing right now when it comes to Zoom and media service in general uh, across pretty much every platform, anywhere you're doing it, whether you're doing uh, OBS, vMix, uh, Aqualon, Ascender, E2, S3, Spider. This is kind of the look everybody's doing. I'm calling this a presenter look, which is a PowerPoint, a, a image of a, somebody speaking on the right-hand side, and then uh, you know lower thirds of the, either the client or the, the pharmaceutical company or the company that you're working for, and then an icon. Again, uh, if you can use the, what we sent you in the template, great. If you have your own to speed up time, I will give you, again, 10 minutes on the clock for that. We will start on Mr. Engstrom's um, go for that. Again, it's 10 minutes, and the, we are trying to create this look, which I'm calling the presenter look. Now, I will add one more note to this. Since you guys have created your first look already, and if you have time to do this, you can go back to modify that look based off the feedback you just received from the judges. But I would like to see where I go into the presenter look. I'm sorry, where we go into the intro look, and I'll bring that back up. I want to see the intro look, which is challenge number two. And then I want you to go to the presenter look, which will be the same person you put into the intro, on 
to that lower or upper right hand side corner of that look. I want you to place them in there and you're able to use an image. We would technically use PowerPoint for this, but uh, for this scenario, we'll use an image just to put in there for sizing. And again, I want you to come, the challenge will be to show me the intro look first and then transition to the presenter look. I will add another bonus point for anybody who adds a stinger in between the intro look and the presenter look. And we will go do you, on. Do you want us to use this image that says a screenshot 2020 1130? Is that the one you want us to use? You can use that one or create your own as long as it fits somewhat of that template. I just gave you that, guys, to speed up some of your process. Okay. Are you talking a music sting there, Omar? Is that what I heard you say? Uh, no, so a transition stinger. So um, for the video guys out there, uh, if you do any kind of animation that goes between one image to the next, we call those stingers. Yeah, so there's a folder in what Omar sent you guys called the free stinger transitions. And then there's uh, some with sound effects and some without. Okay. And, it, and I understand this will be multiple clicks. Obviously, intro look is one click and then presenter look is another click. If you can make that so that those go in as soon as possible or essentially on a cue that we give you to present that look. Um, again, if you use a stinger, you'll get an extra point. If you don't use it, no worries. Um, you're still going to beat it as long as you get within a time. And again, I will let Mr. Anstrom give us the cue to go, and you have 10 minutes on the clock once he says go. 10 minutes on the clock. We're away. Boom, we're away. So while while you guys start, I will let the judges kind of talk and see stuff. We will put up, again, for the audience and everybody involved, we'll put up the two shot oh. of both our OBS operators so you guys can see what they're doing uh, live on their screens. If you guys have any questions about what's going on or what you're seeing, please ask them in the comments. We will get to them. I plan to get to them. As of now, again, I only have one submission for a fourth challenge, which the uh, operators are not aware of, and I would... Um, I will bring to their attention if there's any other submissions you guys can think of for a challenge please submit them in the comments and we will uh, bring them to the attention we plan to have at least 30 to 40 minutes of q a uh, after the fourth challenge to get you guys to ask any questions or anything you've seen here that you didn't understand or want to learn more about and again i apologize for talking too much like as always uh disa and felix please go ahead and take over well, I was just going to say, you know, especially with my shows when it comes to doing this stuff really quick, really on the fly, the video stingers, it's a nice to have. It's a zhuzh. It's, it's an ambiance piece, right? So I, again, I want you guys to, to really hone in on nailing it from that intro, rolling the lower third into our presenter look um when it comes to to the stingers i would much prefer to see what is supposed to be on the screen on the screen than glamming it up with that so there's zhuzh and no zhuzh <laughs> okay so we should be seeing a two shot uh no i am oh maybe i'll need to pin it uh Interesting. So I have to do that. There we go. Thank you. Great. So with that, I have to start looking back at Facebook because I uh, was getting something else together. Um, but I hope everybody is coming up with some ideas. So far, we only have the one for the fourth challenge. Um, <clears throat> think of something interesting, something cool, something uh, you you want to see done and if you have some uh some questions get those questions in as omar said we'll have times for some questions um later on uh yeah i have to uh i see somebody had asked earlier about bodhi's uh video uh, audio sync and why that was in sync when rocco's wasn't so we'll have to make sure we put that in the queue so i'm seeing here you know going on teacher with some of the the Jews, is that what we're calling it? The Jews. The Jews. The Jews. Sorry, Come on, man. Uh, yeah, you know these words. You know, I'm seeing. I'm seeing. It looks like he's getting some of that in there for you. Is is that is that what you're seeing there, or is that just you know generic for for your taste? Is that too generic for you? Who's are you referring to? Oh, uh, sorry, I'm referring to Roko's screen here right now. I definitely see it in Bodhi's right now as we're talking. I <laughs> I see it's some. Getting a little psychedelic. I don't yeah. know. I don't well, know. Yeah. What happened to those clean lines? <laughs> what about you? I'm, I'm gonna try something here. Let's see if. Uh, oh no! I figured that was gonna be a problem. All right. So 
Sorry, folks in uh, Facebook land. I'm going to get rid of what I just. Or sorry, in. Uh, yeah, uh, Rocco's looking uh, looking like Destination John Malkovich's head. If anyone's seen that film, being John Malkovich, no. <laughs> I just gave Zoom. Zoom just got a uh, an infinity screen there for a second, so I apologize right. to you guys. I do, do so j just so you know the facebook community has submitted two more uh challenges for you guys on challenge number four i've sent those both to our judges to determine which ones they like preferably like better um as we're going through this i, I am seeing um uh, both people use different templates i see Bodhi right now is popping up my template that i was using uh to execute it with that i see rocco here kind of doing his own uh, custom template and designing it as as he sees fit So what are some things you're expecting to see out of these guys that we haven't seen so far when it comes to this presenter look? Uh, I expect to see my face like all over both of them. Thank you. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. If you guys want to win on, on Felix, uh, uh, some Felix so points in there. The right now. <laughs> what about you, Diza? What, what, what is something you want to see that you haven't seen so far with, with these guys that they're doing it and everything I, they're doing? I did drop a few hints when we were getting yeah, ready. Yeah, me too. Today. We both did. So, mm, yeah, yeah, so yeah. we definitely listened, which, you know, I, I did say I'll ask once. And then every time I have to ask after that, it's not so nicely. So uh, and let me just say, if, if something All right, we just passed, asked, the, uh, just passed the five minute mark, everyone halfway. Oh, got it. Five minute mark, five minute mark. Thank you, Nat, the clock angstrom, as in opposed to Dwayne the Rock Johnson, we've got Nat, the clock angstrom. Nat was also once our, our Ed Wallach uh, on a previous episode. One time. One I remember time. that. For a day. It was really confusing as my first time on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me ask you this. Let's, let's throw another little challenge out there for the, for the guys building. Is there a preferred color you'd like to see between you two? What would be your preferred color to, see to, to, to sway the vote towards you? I, I just like contrast. So... If you're going to go with a really high color temperature, like both of them seem to be now in the deep blues and purples, yeah, let's layer that with you know something that that doesn't. Well, they're using the assets they were given, yeah. so <laughs> well, which are, which happen to be the AV Educate colors, which is yeah. why mm -hmm. uh, why those were chosen, I think. Yes, sorry, that was my fault. But yeah, we just want to see, uh, you know, this is all about the jus. I'm all about the pop. So we're going to zhuzh and pop. <laughs> oh, so it seems like Roku is also added, which which wasn't a requirement, but but very liked. He's added some uh, a layer effects here where he can transition between what's in that pip on a couple of different scenarios as if it was a PowerPoint. So I'm liking that a little bit here, there. Yeah, I'm he definitely listening to me. I said, you better be ready to take that PowerPoint full screen. I oh, you see that. that? Yep, yep. He's got, he's got, he's making those clicks for that. Bodhi's using some colors. I obviously, I obviously love the colors Bodhi's using. I have no complaints about that side. He's using the icons I like, using colors I like. I mean, he, you know, if I was a judge, I'd be voting for him. I'm just saying. So, Felix, I see someone's already doing some hard lines again. They're not doing any transparencies on that. Um, they do have the, uh, the icons to do transparencies if they wanted to. All right, we're under three minutes. If any of the contestants want to buy more minutes, they know how to reach me. <laughs> I'm good. I'm done. Min <laughs> minutes are available. Got it. So remember, guys, we, we are going to go from the judges will ask you to see the intro look, and then we'll go to the presenter look. Intro look needs to include your lower thirds and your bug that you're using. And when you go to the presenter look, you need to have the same lower third or lower, uh, the bug that you're using for the intro as well as in the presenter view. This should be a seamless build. Uh, and then the fourth challenge is still a mystery. We will determine that after this challenge uh, for everybody who's watching. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes on the clock. And Rock, did I hear right? Are you done? I think I'm done. Okay. Yeah, our attendees are pointing that out too. <laughs> Well, we'll give, uh, we will still give Bodhi the full time. They are using the wording, Rocco is a genius. He is a lot quicker at this than I am. That's for damn sure. Well, uh, Deesa, I don't know if you saw, but they're also using your zhuzh, spelled yes. J-Z-Z-Z-U-S-H. -Z -Z so. No, no, no. That, no. Zhuzh it up a bit, gentlemen, please. I think there's more Zs. 
<laughs> so we're getting some juice comments, some pop it comments. Uh, oh, we're getting a, a request for a possible sl sliding lower thirds. Maybe some animated transition effects there. If you guys want to maybe incorporate that into yours, maybe win some, some brownie points with the judges here. I'll show you a scene later that has animated lower thirds. I know. Um, I will those add, just take longer to make than we have. Of course, of course. And I will add, I would like you guys to, de to describe some of the things that you show us after the fact and how long it does take to take some of these things. Um, I, I do want to let the audience know that we are giving them a, 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 yes. tight, a tight time frame that is not honestly realistic when it comes to uh, OBS. No. Um, I'll also show crawling lower thirds. I have a, a really interesting one that um, some people in my community built, actually. I didn't make this specifically, but I have this HTML file that grabs the last followers to my channel and uses them as a lower seconds. third news ticker. It's really cool. I'm like, I'll show that off once we're again, um, we're, we're at 20 seconds now. 20 seconds left on the clock, guys. So Rocco's already done. We got Bodie's finalizing a little bit more here. Um, and I can't find the file that I'm going to put in, so I just screwed myself. You 10 seconds. It. Anything you like. Anything you like. You got 10 you seconds. Go. That's how I'm going to have to leave it. <laughs> oh, that seems like a judge. Three, a two, judge decision there. One. That's time. time. Time is up. Time is up. I think last time, Felix, you went first. Deja, do you want to go first this time? Or, do, or no, we gave it up. We to need to show it first, right? No, no. Well, we'll let the judges see who they want to see first. So, so Felix, you gave up your chance the first time. Do you want to go first this time? Sure. So let's see Rocco's first. All right. Okay. So um, what I ended up having to do is because people were complaining about the NDI lag, is I went ahead and switched my camera source to using a virtual cam from the uh, main OBS to send the camera feed over to this OBS. Okay. So when you're not using multiple OBS like this and showing stuff up. Yeah. And, I, and then I had to get rid of the, the interesting, cool Tron thing behind me because of that, because NDI sends the alpha channel while virtual cam does not send the alpha channel. So. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and swap to my output real quick. And Felix, you're welcome to call whatever shot you want to see first in whatever order you'd like. I'd like to see him transition it the way he was considering to. So this would be like the presenter, or he's not here anymore, so I just went ahead with the one shot. And then the transition would be, oh, did not transition right? There we go, the transition goes into that. So yeah, so there's me normal, and then transition with the singer. And um, I also used a PDF document so that I could actually show me going through the PDF document with the PDF document being a source mirror underneath everything that is blurred and taken down in transparency. It's just, you know, when you have a 16 by nine image that you're sharing, it's nice to take up that negative space somehow. No, it's impressive. So I'm able to click through and then you see the background change as well. Yeah, the transfer layer background moving with the slides, very cool. And- uh, the PIP windows nicely play it well for the most part. I know you've got uh, time challenges there. Um, <clears throat> I do see, Rocco, that the camera is still pulling the lower third and it's cut off, though. Is it easy to turn that on and off? Yeah, I should have I should have fixed that. Yeah, I, should, I can fix that. Oh, yeah, I can just see that. I get nothing by me. <laughs> Great. There you go. There you there go. go. But that was more than one click. And just real quick, um, Felix, I'll let you, uh, sorry, I'll let you go to Bodhi real quick here as well uh, and give your give your final verdict before we hit the DJ. But just for the Facebook community, uh, the the link is there for you now if you guys want to vote as yeah, well. Well, well, they haven't seen uh, they haven't seen Bodhi. Oh well, yeah, sorry, they did see Bodhi's right. I, I also really no, no. the the, the trans. No. I, I liked your choice of color for the transition too. It matches. It went from your previous look to this this look very nicely. Thank you, and Bodhi. So mine was all limited by time constraint. I couldn't find the file I was looking for for the P like he did with the PDF. I was looking for a specific file. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find it. I was going to use my personal one, but I thought that was unfair because it had a lot more going on in the background. Again, it's a mm -hmm. rebuilt scene. Um, so I just chose the files that were sent to us from Omar to put this one together. Um, and I didn't have time to set up the transition or anything to the first one. All right. Okay. Um, I, I, I really like it, like asymmetrical placement of stuff. There's no doubt about that. There's no rule that says everything has to be, you know, symmetrical and pretty and like a perfect two screen experience or whatever. 
So um, <clears throat> again, I would just play around with composition a bit, maybe move the frame with me up a bit to the right, bring the AV hero in a little bit too. The th um, thing about moving this one, and I'll show you why, is mm -hmm. because... Oh, now I can... Yeah, I can... Oh, okay, you've got a... a there's a window for that layer. Got it. So I had, to, bl to, I had to block that so you couldn't see the layer behind it. If I, again, with more time, I could have used the fill-in overlay to where it wouldn't have mattered where I put it. Okay. So so color see? source and color picker. That's what I'm saying. If I had, I was just trying to get the information in for, first, and then I was going to color source all the other ones out and then move them where I wanted them better. Did we see the transition from? I don't have that. To presenter? Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, no, doing all this under the gun on in timing, yeah, there's no way I could keep up. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and there's either a, of you. you know, on show day, it's it's huge, right? That's why when clients ask for stuff on the fly, I say we just can't. We have to choose the screen states that we have built. Um, I even hear my text saying, "Oh, we'll just build it on the fly." No, we are not building screen states on the fly because I cannot assume that my VMix or my OSB operator is Rocco versus Bodhi, right? Like. Like Bodhi, he, he has a plan, he knows what he wants to do and he wants to execute it, but he needs the time to turn that I also have OCD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, once those screen states are built, that's what we're working with. That's what, what, what we're rocking and rolling with. And I think um, my vote, I don't know if it will get picked for the next challenge, but I think that will be a nice lead out of this one to that presenter look when your screen states are built and they're, you're locked and loaded, and then something happens in show where you have to adjust. So I don't know if we're going to pick that for challenge four. That was my selection of what. So the best tip I can give to OBS operators that need to work, have a workflow that will be easy to work with with when that stuff like that happened is to use nested scenes. Always think about nested scenes in OBS because if you use nested scenes and all of a sudden a panelist changes and you have all these cues, you have like 10 cues where the one panelist is in there, you just got to fix it in one queue, in one scene, and it'll update your entire show. So you have to build your show flows in, in intelligent ways so you can change them quickly. So if and that's from go, like doing. So like, let's see, can I make this? I can't. So on my screen here, you'll see I have seen one in C2. C2 is a blank scene. So what he's saying is if you go into your, your source build, what you do is you can go in and you can add a scene and you can select scene two and it'll automatically drop scene two and behind everything. Now, if I bring it to the forefront, you'll see it kind of over everything and you can minimize. See, I'm grabbing the scene two behind it. That's how I did that. Um, so that's what it, that's what it does. And that's how I have mine set up. Like for instance, like I was explaining earlier, my camera, my camera is a completely separate scene. I grab that scene. I put it on another scene. So that way, if I need to adjust the camera, I'm grabbing for me, it's grabbing one source and moving it easier than grabbing multiple pieces in that, in that imagery to try to shrink it and move it around. So that's what that kind of controls on that. And that is a great feature to use. And that's something that I use constantly on my own uh all my cameras my replay scenes all my edits all my extra life stuff everything i have set up on mine i only have three actual scenes and that are that are used everything else are source scenes but number one what uh, yep let's just go over again what a nested scene means rocco for everyone okay so yeah i can try to go for it through it too all right, so uh, I have a kind of example here. So um, let's say you have, like I have, I'm, right here I have a scene that's called Rocco. Let me move myself. I have a scene that's called Rocco. I'll go ahead and make that. So Rocco is just going to be my video camera, right? And then in my scene three here, I use the scene as a source, Rocco. There, there it is right there. And then I can have another scene that's just below lower thirds, for example. So this is just lower thirds. And anything I change in this scene will update in the other scenes. So this says Rocco Pixel Wrangler right now, right? So if I change my title to uh, Video Guy, then when I go to any scene that has that lower third in it, it will be updated. 
So it's, re- it's especially good with lower thirds because if you change the spelling or something like that, or they give you a new bug or they give you a new, a new uh, icon or whatever, you can update it once and it'll update in all of your scenes. Or well, the speaker uh, faints and someone else has to run on stage. <laughs> I see and program your lower thirds back again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So, so, so real quick. I would hate having me on your show. <laughs> So real quick, just turn it off here. Just to get us back on track here, Felix, who, who do you think won this challenge? Challenge number three. Who? who oh, that's not even a vote. Yeah, that's yeah, Rocco. For this Rocco, one. what about you? Is the same person? Oh, yeah. I think he's won my heart forever, actually. Okay, so we got two votes for that. <laughs> what is what does Facebook land say, Ed? Uh, they are also overwhelmingly for Rocco. But Rocco. honestly, like if if uh, if my ops team said I got Bodie versus I got Rocco, I would be happy with with either. Like they've both instilled confidence that they know they've got the chops. They know what they're doing. And, and the I'll- other thing that I, I did that um, is a really good tip. And I actually am using a plugin right here called Stream Effects. And Stream Effects has all these really cool little effects that you can do and stuff. Hence the name. But one of the coolest things it has is something called Source Mirror. Okay. So in this lower third scene, I'm just going to go ahead and go out of studio mode. And I have um, this window captures capturing the PDF, okay? And then this is actually nothing to delete it. Um, so the window capture has some filters on it. I put, well, I didn't put any filters on it. I thought I did. I meant to put a drop shadow on it. I guess I missed that. Uh, but I have this other um, uh source which is a source mirror which is when you add a source mirror as a source it asks you which source to use and then when i add that source i just choose the window capture of the pdf and then i'm able to have different filters on the source mirror than i am on the original source and that's why they're able to look the same and one is supposed to be one is able to be blurred and lower opacity without affecting the other one because they have different filters and what he's talking about is exactly what i was trying to do to felix's picture is do the blur effect but on my obs portable i don't have any of the plugins installed because i don't see what i did is i have i have a folder in my setup called i don't have (laughs) plugins with all the plugins that i like using in zip files and the way that you install plugins and into a portable OBS, if I just go to my portal OBS folder, this is so ridiculously easy. So this is my different portable OBSs. I go to the main folder and then all I have to do is open up. This is like, if I want to install move transition, for example, open it up and you just take these two folders right here and drag it in and drop them. And you go ahead and replace in the destination. I'm going to skip it because I don't need to install it because it's already installed. And that's it. The, the plugin's installed. You have to restart OBS. Yes. You should do it with OBS off. And you just copy the folders over, drop them in, plugins installed. That's how easy it is to install plugins. And if anybody would like a list of my favorite plugins, I'll go ahead and post that real quick. So our, our Rogo posts that for the community out there. I, I'd like to also throw in there uh, one thing for the judges. I have sent you three um, Audience, audience or Facebook land contributed uh, challenges for number four. If you guys can look at those three that I submitted to you in the chat box on Zoom, let me know which ones you'll like. We'll come to a common agreement on that uh, live on the air with everybody about what's going on. I'll also add real quick for both of you guys, the audience out there has been saying you guys did a great job within the time allotted. Obviously, 10 minutes is not enough time to do a lot of these things. Uh, Chuck. Wojak. Wojak, Wojak is an amazing you. person. Chuck Wojak, <laughs> you, you brought something to the show that I want to, I just mentioned it. A lot of clients, like, like you're saying, have no idea about the amount of pre-show work that we do, which again, goes into what Deetra was saying earlier about not changing things on the fly. Honestly, I love when a client says that there are, but the clients are all different, right? Hey, I need this done. The clients are wanting this and they, they'll make you do it on the fly and you got to do the best you can. Other clients say, no, we created this content. This is what it is. We're not changing anything. So again, this is two worlds for anybody watching this out there. These time frames are unrealistic. They're very hard. They're very fast. Uh, both these guys are very experienced in what they do. We will show a little bit of their of their better content stuff at the end here, or what they think is the best that they can do. We'll dive into the amount of time it takes. Uh, real quick, while while, while Rocco's sharing what he's sharing with the community, and um, while the judges look at those three questions we submitted on the question side for them, for me, uh, Bodie, I'd like to ask you. So, Felix, at the beginning, I asked you to show your intro look how long did that look take you to make exactly 
uh, the intro look from completing layout to now, are you talking about my video or my start soon? Your the video took me about four hours to put together. The starting soon screen took me roughly around an hour and a half uh, with editing all of the um, background images and everything together. Right. And that's just fine tuning all those little, little details that right now you're, you're, and you're building this out to fit to the, to the templates and the time frame what we have here, but you're right. not fine tuning it like you normally would, right? Correct. I got right. a quick question. I don't. I know I, we don't want to hang on for too long, but um, is there a feature either of you can tell me about that can soften frame edges like really quickly, or is that just really laborious? And you can just use a mask. It's really easy if you know the size of your assets like if everything's going to be 16 by 9 just make a 16 by 9 mask and have it be white on the inside where you want to see the image and black on the outside and then you just use the tool that the filter that comes in obs which is uh, it's just, i think it's just called mask um i can look it real quick and that, that'll, that'll soften the frame edge yeah i can show you an example of that real quick it'll only take yeah, me a second quick. sure so i'm just going to make a new scene Actually, I'll do it on this scene. So, like, I I, I don't have the the pow the. Oh, let me go back to that. I'll do it on this scene. So I don't. I, I I'll, I'm just going to soften the edge of this right here. So, um, do I think I have a mask? I think I have a mask in here that I can use. Richard Bright commented on Facebook says going to create a plugin folder. Be right back. They are absolutely useful. Um, Roko obviously uses. OBS Portable a lot more than I do. And uh, when I set up OBS Portable, I didn't move any of my plugins over like I should have. It would have made my life a hell of a lot easier. Okay, I'm just going to show on uh, just using a regular gradient. So I'm just going to bring this gradient to show you what the gradient looks like. You don't have to have the gradient in your thing. So, but this will be an example of how the how a gradient would work. And this would be for a a static mask there's a different way you can do masks that are dynamic and that is using the sfx plugin stream effects using dynamic mask and i can show an example of that working as well later uh, but if i were to take this mask i'm just going to delete i don't need it in the file and i can just take my window capture here or i'll take my background the background will be cool to, to, to actually do that with so if i take my background i'll do filter i'm just going to add a image mask then I go to the folder find the gradient open it up and just like that it's there, there it is it just it masks it the black will be transparent the white will be solid and then you can make any you just have to make them in frame size so if you're working in 1920 by 1080 I would suggest making your masks it has to be the same ratio it doesn't have to be the same Pixel, like it doesn't have to be 1920 by 1080, it could be 1280 by 720. I just make everything the same as my canvas size. And the way that it will work is, it'll work the way that it lands is essentially. Yeah, you can do like I really weird stuff too. You can even like do, like softening just the edges, right? Yeah, I was talking about softening your frame edge so it's not such a stock. If you don't pick just the right gradient or background on the fly, so you, there's it's going to be more plug forgiving. In there's a plugin called StreamFX. With StreamFX, it actually you can take an image source and you can round the edges off. You can uh, do a you gradient like before. what he's doing. Yeah, so it's a plugin on OBS called StreamFX, um, and it's not on the on my portable, so I wouldn't be able to show you it immediately. Um, but you can actually update and download other plugins inside StreamFX to do whatever you want to any images, videos, um, anything. So like any, like my webcam, for instance, uh, one of the things that I'm doing for my webcam is I'm having my logo guy that made my logo. I'm getting the Adobe files from him. I'm inverting my logo here, this one on my uh, beanie here, taking the smoke away and just the logo is gonna be inverted. So all you're gonna see is the outline and then I'm gonna be able to put my camera in it and stream effects will allow me to bring my camera in side of that to where it won't overlap and overlay. So instead of having the basic four by three or 16 by nine square for my camera, I'm actually going to have my logo as my camera overlay and it's gonna be animated with smoke rolling around it and everything like that. That sounds really cool. <clears throat> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. You can see a little bit more of that later. Okay, Omar. Um, I guess we should move along. 
Did we vote? Did we finalize that? Yes, I believe. Yeah, so, well, I don't know if we finalized it. So challenge number four is based on the audience's feedback. I submitted through to you guys. Um, what did you guys see in the commenting there that you thought was probably your, I guess, favorite option? I saw... Um, so here's the thing, and I'll let the I'll let our panelists here kind of judge on this or maybe modify this. There's two that were submitted. I believe one we answered, which, which was a, the first one I sent out, which is bringing in a third party user. Uh, and I'll and I'll bring this down just so you guys can see me. I want to make this a fair challenge. I, I want to give them ten minutes. Still, so the first one that was submitted was about bringing in a third party user in, which uh, Roko did for us unannounced or had done it similar to what the first one was. So that one probably isn't part of the challenge anymore. The other two, one of them was one that I think would just take too much time. And I'll let our our OBS operators kind of tell me this, but one of them was to, uh, four, let's say you have a four-person panel, uh, a look that doesn't get turned, I'm sorry, doesn't get ruined when someone drops out. I, one of the panelists, turns off the video. So in Zoom, there's a way to do this now. But do you guys feel there's enough time to show this, right, and I don't think this is a fair challenge because 10 minutes wouldn't be enough, to bring in four separate panelists into an OBS, do a screen share of that nature, like if you were in a Zoom call without using Zoom at all. Uh, and then the other challenge to that would be also is your internet provider, if you have enough bandwidth to support multiple people coming in through, let's say, OBS Ninja or NDI or Skype or whatever you know, platform you're using. So um, I, I have various solutions to all of those things. Like OBS Ninja is what I like to use, but clients don't like using something that has Ninja in the name for some reason. Um, so like I, I actually made a tool in in Zoom. I'm not going to show that off tonight because it takes too long to set up. It's a Zoom. It uses Zoom OSC, which is a version of Zoom that somebody has written. They, they got the SDK for Zoom and they made their own version of it. And it sends OSC data out of it. Uh, and it lets you know uh, position of people in the gallery and um, what order they're in and how many people are in the gallery. And whenever somebody turns off their camera, it updates those fields. And so I made a tool that takes the OSC information from Zoom OSC and then recrops your isolated shots in OBS. Uh, so, we, so it takes that. So we can agree. Yeah, we hundred percent. We can agree that it is it is possible, but it, it would take yeah. more than ten minutes. Yeah. It, so I have a similar uh, I have a similar overlay for when I play Among Us that I'm going to start using where when we're in Discord, we actually are in a video call. And what it does is it puts my, when we're playing, it's the full screen of the game with me and my little window. And then when we're actually at the meeting table discussing who we think the imposter is, it'll pull my camera into the bottom left-hand corner and have all their video feed around me. That took me almost four and a half hours to set up. So Guys, it is so very cumbersome to adjust all that. Sorry for keep cutting you off. No, no, it's okay. Now, Listen. It's okay. You guys are both. I, I will say the. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You guys are both nodding. So listen, I would like to introduce a final challenge. Uh, I would like to get the judges' approval of this, if possible. Uh, and, and again, the judges will give me the okay for this or not. There will be no time frame for this. I would love to see your guys' best OBS build and why you believe it's the best. We just want to see whatever that is and why you consider it to be the best one, and we want to hear right based off of what it took you to create that build, and that will be what you're judged off of. Not just the time frame for that build that you took outside of this challenge, but what it took for you guys to build that, how you present it, and what it took you guys to execute that look on the final end of it. So essentially what I'm looking for is you have a scene, right? It might have X amount of layers to it. We would like to just see that, but we really want to see what that final look is. So if you have an intro look or an effect or a plug that you find to be very useful, and maybe not very common or unique to your skill set. I would love to see that. Um, but again, I will the judges. I will let them determine whether that is a fair final challenge or not. Okay, so I have a few things I could show hold on, off. Hold on, hold on, um, hold on. I don't know. Hold, yeah. Hold on, hold on. So, Diza and Felix, do you feel like that is a fair final challenge? To I see their best. Idea. Love it. Got it. I got one. One like Felix. Yeah, sure. Let's see it. Let's do it. All right. And what about the Facebook community? Can I get a couple likes for that? Either on the comment side or you can comment in the comments right now just saying yes or no to that. This would be a final challenge. And then we can get into some Q&A like we always do. And you guys can ask whatever you'd like.
So I'm getting a couple little things here. Uh, Esports, DJ and streaming types. Uh, request OBS servers. I'm getting a thumbs up already. Okay. Yep. Lars is thumbs up. I think we're good to go. So I will let uh, Deza, since you were, you will, we got Felix go last. We'll let you go this time. Who should we let go first? Should we let Ed go first? I'm sorry, Ed. Should we let Chris go first? Unless Ed wants to join in last minute. Should we let Chris go first? <laughs> no, I think, I think Phil should go first. <laughs> Listen, if you, I mean, technically we do this on OBS as well, guys. So Ed's probably have a pretty impressive setup. But anyways. Do you no, want... I do this very poorly on OBS. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's, let's be real here. Do we let Chris go first or we let Rocco go first? Bodie. Bodie. Uh, All right. So, Chris, go ahead and show us your best, uh, your best OBS programmed uh, scene that you have. Uh, once we see that, we will let uh, Rocco do his scene, and then we will come back and we'll talk <laughs> about how you guys accomplish those. Well, the judges kind of dive into that a little bit. And if you guys need a second to, uh, you know, if you're running through your portable and you need to uh, switch your virtual camera, you know, take that second to do that. Uh, before we Here jump we in and while while you guys are getting that set i just want to again oh as always thank the dve store for their continued support of av tech talks uh they are super knowledgeable guy and his team are amazing so check out dvestore.com for all your video needs uh you know they help us get some uh, some better resolution uh in these zoom meetings which i know people were complaining about it tonight but that's just because we've got so many Virtual inputs, feeding virtual inputs, and uh, things getting crushed. But uh, DV Store, for all your video needs, they support the show. Uh, great, great people. We really enjoy having them as a sponsor. So hopefully that gave you guys enough time to get set up. And Bodhi, if you're ready, I'll, uh, I'll spotlight you. I'm here. Cool. So what, this is one of the ones I showed before. This is my just chatting screen. I don't have enough participants to show my... Among Us one, I am very proud of the Among Us one because of the amount of uh, technical thesis for the nerdy side of me went into that one. Um, but that one's hard to show because it'll just be a bunch of blank boxes and nobody will know what's going on. Uh, but this one's my favorite one that I've done so far. It's my just chatting screen. So again, it's the background overlay that I've made for myself with my logo in the upper um, corner there. And then I have this blank panel right here. Uh, is actually for when I'm live, and that's the whole point of just chatting as I'm sitting there getting the game up and going. As you see in the center there, it's a bigger screen to see what's going on on my desktop. So say, for instance, um, I didn't I didn't have this full screen right here. Uh, I could take this down. You'll see my desktop behind it. So this is like getting the game booted up, showing web pages and stuff that people are talking to me about and things like that. Uh, and while they're typing in chat and talking to me, the chat actually feel, fills in that blank box right there. Um, so let me let me go to my Twitch real quick and I'll show you because I should be able to do it right on my Twitch. So let me just add, I, I see this little uh, window you have here right now. Every time you're speaking, it's uh, it's moving. So how, what is I'm that? Gonna, I'm going to get there. Hold on. That's I'm, part I'm, of my oh, my uh, plugins list that I added to the yes, earlier is. in the chat. It it's those. called Spectralizer. It's it's great. It's really good. I have it too on this scene. I have So this is my security camera scene. I spelled it wrong, but as you can see, I just went to my Twitch and I started typing and I can just keep going and going and going and going and it fills in. So that's when I'm on live. People are talking to me and going back and forth. Uh, those gradients that are going up and down on my camera, as Omar pointed out, that is the audio visualizer that I have set to my microphone. So when my mic is on, it moves. And when it's not, it's gone. Um, so that I just thought it was a cool little video bug. Um, and I use it on, again, I'll show you uh, the my other, like even when I'm actually gaming, I have it on that one too because I don't have my animated, over, my animated camera going just yet. Uh, so it's a nice little animated feature that goes on while I'm playing and things like that. So I really enjoy that. The center screen here, um, again, is like things that people pull up and I'm trying to get going and stuff like that. Uh, and again, this bordering on my video in the center is also my webcam overlay. Uh, this is one that I'm keeping when I go to, like I was explaining, where when I go to um, the uh, 
wolf logo. I'm going to change the one in the upper left to my wolf logo. The one in the center will stay the, stay the same. Um, so it'll be, and I'm going to create, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to change it where it just says the TBW and it'll have the animated smoke rolling around. Um, and as Rocco just answered exactly. I could make the color change gradient and everything like that. I have it cinemized to my color scheme for my channel. Uh, my color scheme for my channel is green and orange in most part. Um, as, as you can see, there's not a lot of orange going through it, but it's just been always lime green is one toxic green as it's called. It's actually a color scheme is one of my favorite colors out there. Um, that's not the instance behind my name, but uh <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so as you can see, I, in the lower part here, I have my, uh, my font, which is Masterix through Adobe. If anybody wants to use it, it's called Masterix, M-A-S-T-R-I-X is the logo with my Instagram and my, and the Twitter bird, uh, that's for my socials. I do have a social pop-up that comes in here and you'll see it pop up every five minutes. As you see, it's popping up right now. Um, that comes in, that's actually a web browser, a web socket source that's pulled in from another thing where I went in and I customized it to have that little, just every five minutes, it comes in and pops up. Uh, the, <clears throat> then I have my camera, then the little quantum logo in the bottom, that's not built in. That's actually an image that I put in because the, one of the Discord groups that I'm in and involved in and I'm actually a community leader in is quantum gaming. Uh, so, and that's the, and I just, I, I love the look of this one because it came out exactly the way I was envisioning it when I designed it. Like you, you, you go with the mindset of trying to do something and literally, like when I put this together, I'm like, this couldn't have come together any more perfect for somebody who has OCD and everything's got to be in the right place. And every, it was like, it just fell into place. And I'm like, thank God, this was the easiest thing I put together on my damn package <laughs> because it just, it just all fell into place. Now, Chris, you just told us about all the elements that are involved. Is there any way you can show us a desktop, uh, yeah. your desktop and just show us what that scene list kind of looks like you should be seeing it now um i won't be able to go through it but i'll uh, have i have the stream up <clears throat> you should be seeing you're just showing stream. zoom right now yeah you're just showing uh showing us back the gallery it shouldn't be because i opened it well, now we're seeing uh obs behind our gallery there we go there you go. Okay, so now that now that I'm in screen share, like I was saying before, that center is showing my desktop behind me. And I'm, yes, I'm, I'm a little vain. Sorry. It has my own uh, background there. Where did it all go? All right, so let's OBS decide to go away. Um, but it, I'm a little vain with my logo back there, but I'm allowed to be. It's my logo. I worked hard on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, right here, as you're seeing in the OBS, I have multiple sources in here. And again, a lot of these are like the nesting. So like um, my camera, this is my camera overlay and it's nested into my just chatting. That's where the camera comes in at the top there. Um, and then you see a couple other things like the chat box. The chat box is a web socket from um, my Twitch to OBS. So that way when they're chatting, when they're typing in, uh, Twitch, it automatically brings it up on my screen. You'll see a couple audio sources in there, like the chat. The chat is for my Discord. So when people are in my Discord, uh, sometimes in just chatting, I'll just jump in my Discord and everybody will BS. Um, and it has its own, on my mixer, it has its own uh, setting and fader, uh, just like for Zoom. Zoom for me is a fader on my mixer where I can turn you guys all the way down or turn you guys as loud as I want. Um, I also have a music feature, so that way when there wasn't so many DMCA strikes, uh, I could play music in the background, and on my mixer, again, I have a fader where I can actually turn the music off in my ears, and I don't have to hear it. It goes straight to my stream if I don't want to. So if I'm doing something I need to concentrate on, my audience can still have some type of music going on while I don't have to hear it, and I can concentrate on what I'm doing. Um, I do have the audio visualizer, uh, the chatbot Facebook that you see is from when I was on Facebook. So there is also a Facebook web socket to allow, if you're on my a live stream in Facebook, it auto populates there. Uh, the socials uh, is a web browser socket as well, which is that thing that pops up in the corner. Um, I do have the, my image three is my webcam overlay here. Uh, then obviously my camera. And again, I can grab my camera and I can move it anywhere I want. You see that gradient stays there. Uh, because that's a fixed gradient on that point for this one exactly. 
Um, and then I have the display capture, which is the center screen that you're seeing there. And then image number two, which I don't, image number two is actually my background itself. So I've built this out in Adobe and I've just, I've just released it as a P PNG file and it's a P PNG file in the background that's going on. Very cool. That's Very awesome. Cool. Awesome. And those, those windows are all positioned exactly where you want them. Uh, for the most part, that's where I, that's where I liked them. I'm always, uh, for feedback. And if you're going to talk about the center one, I will not move the center one. So don't talk about the center one because it's showing the eyes of my wolf. Oh, I, I, I was going to say, I, I, I realized that's why you did that. But I would <laughs> still give it a little nudge screen, right? Screen, uh, right? Same, okay. We can same do that. with your uh, chat box. It's just, again, the chat box is, is, is my OCD point. coming up. <laughs> the chat box is a fixed point in, uh, the P in the Adobe overlay in the back. And that's why you've probably kept your center screen away from it somewhat. Correct. It's slightly off center. Gotcha. Otherwise, Correct. yeah. Awesome but I look, can man. move this whole <clears throat> entire. So you want it to go to the left a little, you said? No, back, no, screen right. Okay. So we can go this way just a little bit. And then I just up the image on that one, lock that one down, take that image and slide it over to match over it. And there you go. Cool. So, All right. So that, let's move job, on. Man. Love it. Love the layout. Love the, again, the, uh, Borg, I call it Borg Green, being a tracker. <laughs> uh, so the actual file name for the color variances is, is Toxic Green. Um, and I'm the wolf came from, uh, obviously, I love wolves, everything. I am have a big Native American background. Uh, so that's where that came from. Also, I have a very good friend of mine, uh, mine and Omar's, who passed away when he was 18 years old by a freak accident. And his name, his gamer tag was always Wolf. So when he passed away, I vowed that I was always have Wolf in my name. Bio Wolf is there. because bio, bio is because I'm huge into biomechanics as far as anything mechanical and uh, techie is concerned. I kind of thought that kind of fit in. And then Toxic is a anti-mortem against all gamers in the world of being toxic. So people come in and like, oh, you're a jerk because you have Toxic in your name. Actually, I'm the biggest teddy bear you'll ever meet, and I'll probably be your best friend. <laughs> so that's where that came from. Very cool. Thanks, Bodie. Not Great a problem. Talk. So let's let's move on and talk to to Rocco now and see what he's got. You ready? You good? You are, you're all set. You're spotlighted. Great. So there's a lot of stuff I'd like to show you. I'm only going to try to show you a couple things, but I'm going to show you this really cool scene that I was talking about earlier that I really enjoyed making. So I use this scene when I'm going into talking about the news behind live stream technology and stuff. Um, so this is a really, there's a lot of going on here. So one thing is the title, the Lone Star, other Lone Star. That is dynamic. It will change every time I come into this scene. It's, it's off, based off a list of different ones I have. So it pulls it from a list, so, I, so it's different. The bottom news ticker on the bottom takes my last ch uh, followers to my channel and puts their names into news stories using an HTML and CSS and all that weird stuff. Uh, the three monitors are my three monitors on my screen. And then this image right here, the dog behind me, the, 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 whenever I go to that scene, it, does, it, it pulls a random image off the internet of a dog. <laughs> I know, I'll go back so I can see that again. Uh, so if I go to, to my chatting scene and then I go back to the new scene. And you'll see that it updates dynamically. And um, there's also music on this, but I don't have it outputting right now because I don't want to deafen you. Or get us kicked off of Facebook. So. Yeah, yeah. There's like a like a news like real like bam, 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 kind of thing. And I see the dog is now a puppy, and uh, it, it 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 pulls the list randomly. But I don't know if it's ever going to be different if it's going to be a random or not. But it it's I have like Lone Star Pixel Wrangler on there and all kinds of different stuff. So this is one thing. And then another cool thing I do is really quick. Rocco, uh, how did you get the uh, the perspective on the screens? So that's using 3D Transform. Okay. That's another yeah, so that's, plugin. Or that's another it's, plugin. No, it's part of StreamFX. It's part of StreamFX. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's part of that software. Okay. Yeah. So, like, it's all on that list I sent earlier. Uh, let me see what's going on here. 
Yes. Okay. So if I do, this is another cool thing I made. Say cheese. So my background <laughs> is, is the, hold on. This is the best freaking thing I've ever seen in my life, by the way. Okay. So anybody that knows anything about Twitch, they have channel points. He has this adjusted to his channel points where when you submit the channel points, it does that effect. I will tell and him, it, right. I will tell you right now, the amount of work that goes into getting that working is freaking insane. And I commend you for that. <laughs> so the, the cool thing about it too, is not only does it take the channel points, but the channel point reward allows you to enter text. So whatever text they enter will be written out onto the Polaroid. And I had to do a lot of calculations with that to make sure that the text always fitted on the Polaroid. That is and for, unreal. <laughs> yeah. And then it's, it saves the Polaroid as a PNG and then it automatically uploads that PNG to my Discord server so that people can grab the pictures. I also have a version of this. I like doing IRL streaming. What I do is I have another version of OBS that I, I have, I set up an SRT server on my, on my computer. It's, I just have it on a Linux machine, like a virtual machine. So I have an SRT live server. I send SRT H265 using Larix Broadcaster and I attach a camera to an Osmo, one of those like gimbals. I attach that to my shoulder and I ride around New York city on an electric scooter and they have a, a channel point reward when they do the Polaroid one, instead of giving a, a Polaroid, it makes a postcard and then it, they put the message on the postcard and people are able to download that postcard and share it among each other. I need like a free weekend to sit down and like, I'm, I'm totally already told him I am stealing that from him. Cause that is freaking just badass. The Polaroid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and then that like was, that I, was very techy and very creative at the same time, and that's a real hard trick to pull. That was very impressive. Oh, and the so, cool thing about the Polaroid trick is that since version twenty six of OBS, I believe we had the ability to save screenshots of sources and main output. But before that, we were able to save uh, a, a, a an image using. WebSockets. So I made this effect be before OBS came out with the ability to do this. But OBS WebSockets is another plugin. It's my favorite plugin, by the way. OBS WebSockets is by far the best plugin ever made for OBS. It allows you to save sources as images. You just have to know how to write JSON to do it, and that's going to be a little bit confusing. But yeah, I mean, like the coolest thing about like the stuff I do is the little stuff, though, because like I'll do things like if I go to my game capture screen. I'm just going to go off this real quick so, so you can see something that's really cool that I can do is I can move my camera anywhere I want onto the screen. And then when I hit this button, it will always go back to where I want it to from the location. And that is like what I'm actually doing there is I'm using OBS WebSockets to get the information of where it is and then to capture that information of where it is and then send it to where I want. So I, I'm polling OBS and saying, hey, where is the camera right now? That way I can have these nice smooth moves from anywhere. So it's all these like little things that are a lot of fun to do in OBS once you learn how to do them. You know, I do like, you know, fun things where I like zoom in. I got this really cool sensor effect that I put on when I'm eating. But people don't have to watch me eat. I need that. <laughs> so, and then I also so, have like uh, dynamic backgrounds too. I can do like, you know, I can bring up different backgrounds at a push of a button, you know, and then I have this one as my clones, my clone scene. So I can, I can call in clones. So, so real quick for the judges and again for Facebook land as well. Who, uh, who won challenge number four? <laughs> I, I, I gotta ask. I still gotta ask. I gotta ask. And uh, the links, Todd, Todd the links are live. Question. Todd asked a question. Is this controllable with Streamlabs Twitch side? It is. It absolutely is controllable that way. <gasps> so yeah, a lot of this. See, my background is actually in uh, video design and interactive technology. So doing this side of stuff, I always want to try to figure out how to do it where the audience can control it. So like when I got my start on Twitch, I actually was doing a lot of robotics and engineer, electronics engineering. And where I st actually started getting, I started getting, my channel got popular is when I made my Twitch chat controlled battle bots. So I had these little robots that Twitch chat controls through chat commands and they fight each other. And so like, I love doing the interactive side of, so the of this funny stuff. Thing, so the funny thing about this is I, I'm, 
what was it, three or four shows ago, we were talking about something and Rocco came in uh, in the stream and or was it the I don't remember if it was the show or if it was the podcast, but we were Rocco came in and started so- saying something and me and him started going back and forth in chat. What I found out from that is I had actually watched Rocco's stream for at least six months before that. I absolutely love his stream and how he does. He literally comes in and he does everything he's doing in OBS right now. He goes in and he explains it and he goes over it and shows you how to do it. And his chat helps him and comes in and helps him build stuff and and be like, Hey, how can we build this? And they're like, okay, well let's, he's like, let's figure it out. So they sit there and they figure it out. It's freaking amazing what he does. It's, it's absolutely, I commend you for how you've done your Twitch and how you set it up Thank aside you. from just being a straight gamer on Twitch. Me on the other <laughs> hand, I'm just a nerd that likes to game and have fun. So that's what I use my Twitch platform for. Maybe one day I, uh, not only true, I built four computers on Twitch and I've showed and answered everybody's questions and asked questions and stuff like that so but what his platform on twitch and what he does i i absolutely commend him for because he will literally sit there for six hours and set something up on stream and i'm like dude you have the patience of a freaking angel with everybody talking (laughs) to you and throwing ideas at you and stuff like that it's it's actually really cool so if you've never checked it out you absolutely need to check that man out so again i I gotta i gotta ask because we're 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 running out of time here felix and diza who do you feel won challenge number four We get a drum roll from someone. Uh, I gotta attempt this. Hold Damn, on. I don't have that on my audio cue. I've got in back there somewhere. Camera action. Wow. I I uh, I, I I give my last vote uh, to oh. Rocco just because that was just some really next level <laughs> shit we just saw there. I'm getting follows on on my stream right now. <laughs> my follower <laughs> alerts. <laughs> um, well, and, and again, I, love Bodie's look. Love you. Love the ask, composition, but uh, was, that was pretty next level. Totally, totally agree, Felix. And there was a comment in the chat about OBS being free versus products like VMix, which are not. So, Rocco, can you share like what is the hard cost associated with what you've done? Is it just your time, or are you buying assets to do this? Well, like I said, my background is in video design. I'm a, actually a USA 829 projection designer. Uh, I've designed five shows on Broadway. I've designed internationally. Uh, so I make my own assets. Um, so there's the only cost that I have in terms of this stuff is my time. Um, I do give money to OBS because it's a free project. I give them money every month. I would suggest that you do too. I have a thing that I wanted to share with everybody. I don't think I actually closed it. But yeah, it's open collective. I'm going to get the link in so that you guys can, if you use OBS in any way and you make money doing it, please, please, please consider becoming a contributor to OBS collective. There goes some more of my, <laughs> my, my alerts. Um, a couple of mine went off in the background. Over here too. And the other thing that, that is very important is that OBS can get really, really messy. So you need to be very, very good about the way you uh, organize everything. And if, if I could just show something real quick on my scenes, if you'll notice my scenes, I'm going to pull out the scene window actually, so I can pull it in the middle and I got this little magnifier. You can see it. So I have a scene that doesn't have anything in it. It's just to, to, to differentiate the list. So, so that's just used for titling that everything that's a scene has the word scene in front of it. Okay. And this, and then I have all my cams and captures and then I got all my pre comps and like, and all my interview stuff. And so like it, you have to be organized. If you're not organized, then you're going to have a really hard time. And to continue with that theme, if you would look at how I actually organize my folders, it's ridiculous. Actually, I don't know why I closed it. Now, this is a really good point. Whenever I've used OBS, you know, I don't use scenes a lot, but I do, I, I just build like out of the, um, What's the, the column next to it called? <laughs> the sources. The sources. I'm not looking at it now, so I can't. Yeah. And um, that's very practical, really practical stuff to uh, have all those scenes preloaded. So and, to answer uh, the yeah. question, and, though, and, that people... and it can, like uh, 
Rocco said, it, it can be get really messy really quickly live if you're not on the ball right. and, um, and focused on it. Um, yeah, drinking while using OBS is not a good idea. Uh. <laughs> Something else I always do in terms of my file organization is I have a folder for every single scene that I have to keep it organized. And in those folders, I have a folder for the projects and a folder for the content. So I'll have all my project folders in here, you know, if it be After Effects files or Photoshop files and all my content will be in here. And then I'll I even like organize it even further down. Like I try to tell my, I, I, I teach as well at Marymount College every once in a while. I'm an adjunct there. I taught a class uh, interactive uh, uh, virtual performance in the time of COVID was my class. And that's the was the main thing I tried to get them to learn was just keep everything organized. Yeah, thanks, Sid. I just realized they put the wrong one in. <laughs> you you sending people the wrong lo Lone Star? I you sent them to the other I, Lone I Star. Did. I did on <laughs> accident. It's just forced to have it, honestly. So, but, uh, so I think I think he got so, it wrong too, though. I think um, <laughs> he, he did initially because he probably took it from me. But anyway, Ed got it but, wrong too. But no, I, well, the, I did it first, and then I I changed. I went and found it because I realized it was. It's not the Lone Star. It's the other. It's, it's the other, other Lone, Lone Star. The That's the Twitch Star. channel, yeah. right there. Oh, I, yeah. I sent us a direct message. Oops. It's okay. Yeah. So to answer well, the question the real one. quick, Jeez, sorry. To answer the question real quick about like the VMix versus OBS type thing, if you have, if you have an experienced operator like Roco or myself using OBS, I in the time needed, I am more comfortable and can build and use OBS way faster and more efficiently than VMix, but. For somebody who doesn't work with OBS daily or doesn't operate OBS the way Roco and I do, vMix is great because of the GUI system and how simplistic the GUI system is and pulling other callers in and, and getting rid of the callers and stuff like that. Whereas I would probably need at least a week or two show prep time to build scenes out, to build sources out, to do things. So that way when callers hang up, it transitions back to one caller. To bring callers in, it transitions back to another one, things like that. So it is for... It's a free source that is very useful and can be amazing to use. But vMix is not something, when you go to somebody and, and we've talked about it before, when you go to a client and you tell a client, oh, I'm gonna use this free software, they're gonna go, you're trusting my show to a free software. And it's like, okay, well, I can use this and it's this much money and they're all, they just don't care. They don't care the fact that I can do the same thing in vMix, they just want the ease of use and the name behind vMix in a lot of the instances that I've come across. I don't know about other people, but that I've come across, people kind of like stick their nose up to OBS because it's free. Um, and like Rocco said, definitely I give, I'm not a man that's able to donate a lot of money, but I do give the OBS project uh i've actually donated probably somewhere over the two years that i've used obs and their plugins and things roughly around 500 dollars to them nice that's awesome uh so i guess i don't know that uh we got the final and we didn't show the uh the oh, votes and um, i was Russell just giving won. my vote we <laughs> haven't done the full yeah yeah so where are we at disa what's your vote I got to go with Rocco again. Sorry, Bodie. He's got You're my fine. heart. I'm fanning myself here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to bring up the uh, the online votes. Looks like it is an, another one for, for Rocco here. So what does that, uh, Omar, put the official tally at? So that puts the official tally for tonight as Rocco the other Lone Star as tonight's winner. Congratulations, Rocco. You have won the OBS challenge against Toxic Wait, Bio Wolf on AV Tech Talks tonight. You have won exposure fun bucks and tons of <laughs> gratitude for us. Um, honestly, the, the community really enjoyed this conversation. They gave us some great feedback. <laughs> he had that already. Oh, yeah. Oh, one more. There's too many buttons here. Where's the fireworks? <laughs> nice. Uh, so we did get a couple questions, but I also I want to throw it to the panel for a moment. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts? Uh, I know Jeff, you do a lot of production in the cloud, and 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 
stuff. What are you guys thinking about what we just saw? I, I wanted to say uh, I appreciate both of the guys showing um, the other way of doing things. It's it's a workflow that uh, I personally don't like. Uh, I'm more traditional video switching. I need inputs, Emmys, and things like that. But it's really interesting to see how far with the scene-based looks you were able to pull it, push it. And, uh, yeah, I, w I was impressed. I, I got to be saying, I am impressed. Rocco, you've got some skill sets, brother. You definitely have some skill sets. Thank and, you. And, Moda, you do too, buddy. Yeah, without a doubt. You've, you've definitely uh, you've definitely opened my eyes a little bit more with some possibilities. I mean, I've been around OBS and just used it for simple, stupid stuff, Not nothing really advanced. Uh, I still prefer my, my tools that I usually use a little bit more. But, now, uh, the, the, I will say that uh, I watched your show the other day, the other, a few week, couple weeks ago. We were talking about on the cloud. So, and since then, I've been pr playing with OBS on a paper space cloud instance. Okay. And I've been playing with that with OBS Ninja to see how many colors I can get in and stuff like that. And it seems to be working pretty well. And the interesting thing is, is it is like OBS can take SRT feeds. So that opens up a lot of possibilities because SRT is just, you know, the way to go. Well, the only problem with SRT is the uh, latency is a little bit more than what you can get with WebRTC. So uh, that whenever you're doing, if you're doing this kind of thing, you notice we're stepping on each other a little bit. Uh, so we're, we're kind of lackadaisical, I guess you would say, about being stepping on people. But when you're in a corporate environment where they're going like, okay, Chuck, what are your thoughts on this other matter? And then Chuck talks for two minutes and then it's like, okay, Lisa, can you tell me about your thoughts? You know, when it's slow like that, SRT can really rock and really work well. But uh, I actually, that's what I used OBS uh, for, was doing some SRT testing and stuff in the cloud. And I actually just recently used OBS to push directly to Millicast, which is a WebRTC platform. They have a special version that they built for OBS. And I was impressed. I mean, the quality that I was getting out of that encoder, where it was going, how fast it was going, it was pretty impressive. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, anybody else have anything uh, they want to add? Uh, Nina, I saw your hand. Sorry. And then we'll go to Ori. Sorry about that, Ori. Yeah. I, so it was just really interesting to see how multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary everything could be because the even the idea is like, oh, I did this thing in Photoshop and then I brought that in or I did this in Illustrator, brought that in and After Effects and like how when you're thinking about the design of your OBS and the workflow structure, like including all of those aspects into like how you're building your scenes. And it was just also cool to see that there could be different workflows, like both Rocco and Bodhi were working very differently. <laughs> and so that was cool to see like that there's no, it's always good to see that there's no one way to do something. And I'm now I've gotten some ideas to experiment. <laughs> It's really funny when I'll be work because I also do uh, event master programming. I'm not anywhere on like I'm not amazing at, at being an event master programmer. I can do you know I'm okay at it, but I'll be working on the event master and then I'll run out of layers and I'll be like, but OBS can do more layers in this and it's free and like it always like blows my mind that I can just keep adding stuff in OBS and then all of a sudden like I'm working on something else and it says oh I'm out of DSKs and then I can't do anything. It's just, it's weird that this free software, as long as your computer can handle it, will just keep giving you stuff. <laughs> All right. So that, that is the part is as long as your computer can handle it. And that's where so many people get into trouble, both with OBS and vMix both, is they would just say, well, it's supposed to have unlimited. Let me just throw 50 NDI sources at it. Not oh, no, it'll, it'll choke up on that real fast. And like it'll choke up on Obviously. WebRTC feeds too. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. You, you have to understand what your limits are, even though they always say it's unlimited. Yeah. So my new build is I'm, I have a, I want to get to 30 WebRTC feeds. That's the goal. Um, I know I can handle at least 12 right now and I'm still upgrading, but it, you can get up there if you upgrade enough. My old system, which was a 6,700K, was able to do like three or four, you know, and then it would start choking. And you got to remember too, SR, uh, WebRTC is a scalable format. So you yeah. could 
cut your bit rate down and, and get more streams in that way. It's just just like anything. You have control. There's less control in NDI. It's it's kind of a it's all in or not when you're so what are you that. using now, Roco? Rocco. OBS yeah. OBS Ninja. Oh my right, new system? But, yeah. I, I just got a fifty eight hundred K, but that's temporary because I ordered a fifty nine fifty. And I have somebody that's going to buy the 5800 once once I get the once I get the 5950. In. And even more reason to love this man. He knows what a better processor is. I mean, it's the one that costs more, right? <laughs> Ori, you got a question as well, Ori? Oh no, I was just going to say I was kind of blown away uh, seeing all of the uh, the workflow enhancements and shortcuts that these pros used and. Uh, Certainly nested scenes at least is gonna save me hours <laughs> on uh on building stuff in the future. So thank you both for all of that info. Yeah, I feel like we didn't really like get into the weeds with any of like the the cool tools I have. Like I wanted to really show off of all weird things, I wanted to show off this thing um that a friend of mine made. And it's like this little dock here that's supposed to emulate what an ATEM does with the multi-viewer. I just have it set as a dock, but you can set it as a scene and then use your, if you like OBS multi-viewer, which I don't like, but some people like it, you can make your multi-view look exactly like an ATEM. And it has like this, the status, it'll tell you your bit rate, it'll tell you uh, how, how, what you're streaming to, you know, and all that stuff. And it, it'll tell you if the stream is healthy. And there's another one that he has that will show your recording stats. I'm gonna post that in the chat actually. Uh, this guy makes really good stuff and tools for OBS. He has this real, another one that's really cool. It's called uh, a filter monitor and it's another way that you can dock. And I use this for audio filters. I can just click on these buttons and it'll turn my audio filters on and off as a dock. I actually have a YouTube video about making it, uh, about, about using this. And it's like such a cool tool. And it's like, there's all these little things that are community driven that really can make OBS just like work so well. It's so cool. So yeah, I would definitely check out that guy's all of his all of this stuff on his GitHub. Yeah, I just posted that for the Facebook audience uh, as well to see. Um, I want to just take another quick gander at the gallery. anybody uh, Anybody else have any anything to say? Any anybody else? Iris, I I, I just need to say it was a <clears throat> a privilege to watch you guys in action. Uh, really wonderful job, both of you, to to in, enjoy. Couple hours, you're watching your talents, and uh, yeah, your particular your your last segment there, Rocco, was uh, was pretty impressive with the Polaroid. That was, uh, like I said, very neat technically, and um, thinking definitely uh, thinking uh, out of the box completely. It was uh, something I, I didn't mention with like, that Polaroid. Well, what can I add that, here? <clears throat> yeah, well done. It, yeah. it gives me a random image on my background too. So whenever I do the Polaroid, hey, it uh. It's a different image on the background each time. It's kind of kind of a neat thing. Are there any Broadway COVID nineteen shows? No, there isn't. <laughs> it's all closed right now. I'm actually working for Manhattan Theater Club, which is a Broadway theater, right now doing um, editing play readings. That's what I do on my weekends. And during the week, I do conferences. During the weekends, I edit play readings. Iris, you had something you wanted to say? I was just thinking about how technology has changed so much because all the things we had to go through to do lower thirds and television graphics and framing that now they're just doing like, Oh, let me do this. And I'll just have a list here. And this is all here. And it's just blows your mind that stuff that used to take us forever to try and line up and everything else, just poof, you just throw more stuff in. <laughs> yeah. As soon as, uh, now that you can do things with alpha channel, it makes a lot of these things much easier than, it, uh, than if you do it on hardware um, with either chroma keying or luma keying or cut and mm -hmm. fill. So, Oh, yeah. Um, great. Uh, anybody else? I, I think, you know, we there were a couple questions that came in on Facebook. I don't know that we were kind of getting a little short on time. So maybe just really quick. Uh, Randy had asked, can you add customized uh, GIF images to OBS? Uh, sure. You can. I wouldn't suggest it. The GIF isn't the best format for OBS, but it will run them. Yeah. Great. Um, someone use Web WebM is 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 my go-to format if I want to include an alpha channel. Okay. Um, someone asked related to last week, would OBS Portable be what you would use in an AWS virtual machine? So Rocco, you said you were playing with that a little bit. What are you? Did you just do a regular install 
on the there's, VM? There's really no difference between the two, except for where some stuff gets stored. So on a regular installation of OBS, you'll have a bunch of stuff that's stored in your app data folder, you know, app data roaming OBS. There's some stuff that's stored there. When you do OBS portable, none of that is stored there. It's stored within the home folder. That's really the only difference between the two. Uh, and really, I can show you how to do it on OBS. If you want to just see it real quick, how to do OBS uh, portable, it's, just, it's like a two minute tutorial, if that. So literally all you do is you go to OBS, to the, go to their website. Oops, wrong, wrong one. OBS, download. And when you go to download it, you download the zip, okay? Um, you get that zip. And you go to wherever you want to put it. I'm going to go to where I put mine. OBS portable. So I have these OBS portable uh, installs here. So I just unzipped the folder to a folder. So I have OBS portable one. I have one that I use for widescreen recording. So like I'll record, I'll send like my game capture and my camera to an extra wide screen. And that way when I'm editing, I could have a separate source of my game camera and my extra wide screen. So I have that there. Uh, but you just take your, your where unzipped, you go into your data folder, the data, yeah, data, OBS studio, I'm, I'm wrong here. I'm, where do you actually go? Bin, 64 bit. Go down to the OBS.executable, make a shortcut, put the shortcut anywhere you want on your computer, okay? So I just put it in the main folder here. And then you go to properties and under target, you add a space, the space is important, dash, dash, portable. And you could just add P too, that's the same thing. But you can just go dash, dash, portable at the end of the target. That's all, that's all you have to do. And then OBS, it'll, when you click on this guy right here, it'll open up a, another instance of OBS and you won't get that error that says OBS is already running. You know? right, that, and, and you that's, can put up- That's how you, yeah. you're able to run more than one instance of OBS on the same machine. But also I think you had explained to me at one point that you use that to organize different plugins for different types of projects that you're using. Uh, yeah. So when I, I, for example, when I do these conferences, I use one OBS to control just my camera and that, ha and I have another OBS that does the live streaming for the conferences. Neither of those have any plugins because it's all simple, simple, simple. And I don't want any plugins to get in the way, you know, cause it's just supposed to be capture a zoom call, send it out to the world and that's it. So that's what I use portable OBS for. So I could have different combinations of plugins and also so I can test out beta builds of OBS without committing to them. Because right now there's like OBS 26.1 is on in beta right now. And there's some really cool features that I want to play with, but I'm not going to use it on a mission critical project yet. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, that's good. It's good to know Like you know, that, that you have those options where you can play with the new features and not totally, uh, totally screw yourself. If you have upcoming jobs and you don't want to commit to it, uh, but also to have totally separate OBS builds. For different things um so i don't think we have anything else questions wise uh unless there's anything else from the panel we uh we went a little a little heavy today it's 9 15. there was one question sorry to chime oh. in there it was asking about the text overlays and how oh, I, I must have missed that flow is with that what about text overlays it literally just asked about text overlays. <laughs> uh, it was on Facebook. It said explain yeah. fixed overlay with text box. Yes, thank you, Iris. You're welcome. Great, I missed that one. So thank you guys for picking that up. Is that the one that, where Bodhi was showing off his chat? Maybe. Probably. Uh, and that it, it came in around that time and also when you had the scrolling up at the bottom of yours. It was like well. 20 28 minutes ago. So in So that yeah. those are both using browser sources. Yeah. Those are both browser sources. OBS has a really great way of using browser sources and browser sources can be local or from the internet. So like my, my news ticker was a local browser source. It was just an HTML file that I added and I'm not a great HTML programming or CSS. I'm just now learning it. Um, and then it's the same thing for, for the Twitch chat overlay. It's just, it's just picking up the IRC instance and doing some CSS, like cleaning up of it and then presenting it in a browser source. 
Yeah. Oh. Well, good. I'm glad we we got that last that last one in there that we missed. Um, this has been a lot of fun. This is a definitely a different kind of episode than we normally do. Uh, you know, it was the head to head competition was was cool. Uh, I, I had a great time. I think the audience, judging by the reactions on Facebook, uh, enjoyed what they saw. Uh, I think all of us can say we are totally blown away by the what OBS can do in the hands of someone who really knows it and understands it. Uh, and and we got to see two different, very very different workflows. Uh, you know, one coming from more of a gaming side, which had uh, as, you know great aesthetics in the, especially in the final challenges that we saw the last challenge. Um, I think it was Felix who mentioned that uh, Bodie's had great composition uh, and and really liked the look of that. And then uh, you know Rocco does uh, I know does a little bit more of that corporate stuff and 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 then he has a lot of fun with things with like that <laughs> as he's as he's uh, freezing his image and you know doing all these things. So it's just a it's so cool what can be done with OBS uh, and it's free. It's amazing that there's this much power. Uh, as long as you can, you learn it. As long as you go to the other Lone Star on Twitch and learn how to do all these things, then uh, then you guys can be OBS uh, masters as well. Uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, that's my take on it. Uh, I had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, I hope everybody else did too out there watching. If you did, you know, send us some last comments. Let us know what you thought of tonight. Is this uh, this departure from our normal thing something that, uh, that you'd like to see again in the future? Well, it's an overwhelming, uh, definitely need Rocco to come back and show a lot of those plugins uh, that he's using and maybe dive into some detail on those. He'd probably be better apt to explain that over myself because he uses a lot more plugin features than I do, um, especially with his Lambian board and things like that. Uh, but I definitely see a lot of people really like this. And I just want to say from me, thank you for the feedback because uh, – Somebody who doesn't do this generally uh, for video production, you guys have definitely uh, definitely pumped me up a lot compared to what I thought I could do. So just leave it at that. Cool, cool. Uh, Omar, you got anything else uh, to, to take us out tonight? Uh, I don't. I want to thank everybody for being here. It's, uh, I know Nate had to leave a little bit early, but I want to thank him for being our clock today. Uh, again, you know, anybody wants to, wants to be involved with us on the panelist side, or, you know, or be more involved and, and get a little bit closer to the action, see some of the pre-production, some of the behind the scenes. Uh, Ed has dropped a link in there, which we will pin for you guys of getting to the Zoom side with us. Um, again, we go live at, or we open the doors at 6.30, go live at 7, we're until 9 o'clock. I want to thank the panelists for being here tonight, especially for DJ and Fifth for coming on. I literally told us about last week. I threw in a lot of little uh, twists and turns there for us to, to keep it exciting for everybody. Um, thank you for judging it and I'm seeing it tonight. Uh, big thanks again to Bodie and to R Rocco here for, for just doing the challenge for us and being fun sports about it, uh, showing us your systems, you're operating and how you guys run things. It was very educational as well. I, you know, everybody's pretty much said what I thought of, of what I thought of saying, you know, I was surprised myself of what OBS can do. I, I have thought for a while that OBS is very similar to kind of what vMix does. As long as you have the content ahead of time and it's pre-built and everything like that, it's a very powerful program. It can does a lot. Uh, Roku definitely pushes it to its limits. Bodhi definitely pushes it to its limits. These guys are showing you the full breadth of what um, OBS can do. Uh, I know a lot of comments are getting. They want to see more of Rocco's stuff, more of what he's got going on. I'd love to bring you back on here again. If you guys uh, didn't see that link, though, we did see a link. Rocco does the same format we do on Twitch. He's got tons of great content, tons of great stuff on there, tons of videos. If you guys really want to learn more from this gentleman, uh, I highly recommend going to his Twitch page. It was, it was an awesome watch. I, I definitely dove in for a couple of days. Yeah, uh, and all the stuff. stuff that I made, there's VODs online on my Twitch channel. If you can watch the VODs if you have four hours of extra time <laughs> to see how I make stuff. Because I don't, I don't come in knowing how to do these things. I figure it out live on stream. So that's why, like, if I were to build something that I already know how to do, it wouldn't take four hours. But figuring it out takes four hours. <laughs> Which is also cool because, I mean, he's showing you from start to finish how he gets this whole process done. And I think that's the that's the best part about learning because – and if you go there when, you, when he goes live, he'll talk to you live and chat with you and, and you guys can get feedback and everything. It's a great it's a great program. You guys should watch it as well as ours as well. But, uh, but again, thank you guys for being here as well. I don't think we have much time. It's, it's 920. I don't think we've ever gone this far. Tons of positive feedback in the Facebook land. Tons of positive feedback in the comments over here. 
Thank you as always, uh, Jeff Keithley for being here, for Iris being here, Iris Huff for Nina Fields being here, for Ari Brunson. Man, I'm so glad to see you back and back with us again, man. It's always a pleasure. Adam Burley, man, glad to see you. I know you've been you've been having a tough time with with the move and everything going on like that. I don't want to get too much out there, but you've been doing a lot of things, man. I'm glad to see you back on the show with us. You know, and, and again, another shout out to Felix. Felix Pike and Dizzy Cameron for coming on and being our judges, uh, especially for getting very little info for me uh, because I'm not organized. But um, but thank you for being here and playing good sports. And uh, again, thank you, Facebook Land and uh, Bodie. If you'd like to close it out, I well, know you got a little something. We gotta something. we gotta tell them next week. What do we got coming up? Oh, uh, so next week on AV Tech Talks, we will be t- we will be going over PTC cameras. So if you guys want to learn about PTC cameras from a little bit from the Fox and family, uh, Kelly Fox will be on with us. Uh, you can see that link in our AV Educate page. Uh, and the event side, um, that's pretty much the short and gist of that. If you want to learn more about it, click on the link, uh, and you can l- learn more about that. Cool. And then what do you have coming up on uh, the podcast this week on Wednesday? So the podcast, we actually are in the air right now between um, Amanda Brady talking about business and Kelly Fox and coming back uh, to speak about his show on uh, Monday, essentially. Um, we're just locking down whichever one kind of locks down first. That is in there right now as a um, to be determined kind of slot or coming soon slot. The reality is we're just waiting for one of them to confirm first uh, to get that. Uh, but we got a strong demand to bring back Amanda for a part two of uh, Run Your Business. She was uh, highly re- uh, receptive by the community and they want to hear from her again and have more questions for her. Uh, and Kelly Fox, and obviously, is a well known industry guy in Central Florida. Uh, um, him and his family. I'll own a bunch of PTC cameras and they are operators, owners of a, a line of PTC cameras and do this for um, a living. So they're a great resource when it comes to that. And uh, Kelly Fox is going to talk to us. Um, the whole goal of the podcast, by the way, is to, to not only educate you guys and give you that next level up in your in your own personal careers and your own personal life when it comes to the AV industry, but also as well as be able to talk to these people here um, when they have the time as, as, as well to talk to us to kind of get you that extra opportunity to ask them something Maybe not so much in the demo format that they couldn't answer, but just get more about them and their background and the, and a history of who they are, what they do, where they're going. Um, and if you are, you know, want to learn more about them or contact them and be more more one to one, the podcasts are a definite place to be when we talk to them because uh, that is a closer format with Austin Jackson and myself, where we get to know the person more directly. We try to keep them topic specific, just so you guys also learn as well as not just talking to somebody. Um, but anybody is welcome to speak on any one of our platforms whether it be the AB Tech Talks and demoing things out or whether it be the podcast and just having a talk that you feel that might um, educate the community or help keep the level of education and knowledge uh, at where it is and so we can continue to rise it as we grow as an industry moving forward past, you know, the current situation that we're in. You know, sadly, Omar, the the week that I was on the podcast, you weren't there and uh, I really just talked about my childhood. I talked about my life and uh, it was probably the most boring uh episode that your your viewers had to sit through uh so i liked it man i liked it i liked it not at all i think that was the first episode i ever saw actually <laughs> yeah it was a, a it, walk down memory lane this. for me i was uh, sold i loved it nice uh and uh chris do you want to tell us about uh the charity that you're doing yes so i have two things going on uh as we've all have found out through this and if you didn't know already i do stream on twitch monday tuesday friday and saturday uh, I have all set up to where you donate to Extra Life. It's for giving money for kids at local hospitals, pay their medical bills, pay anything that they need while they're in the hospital and things like that. Um, there is a link. If you go to my Twitch channel and I'm not live, you can still type it in, uh, exclamation point, Extra Life, and it'll bring up the donation link, uh, as well as um, anything donated to me personally. So on my stream, I have my PayPal set up to it. Anything donated to me personally is going to buy Nintendo Switches for the kids at the local hospital as well. Uh, We already have two families at the local hospital that are being sponsored by the hospital, and I have one Switch already going. I'd like to get another one. So anything donated to me personally will go to that. Uh, My stream has become my baby as far as coming to give money back to the people that matter most, and those are our future and our kids. Very admirable. Very cool, man. Yeah, yeah, no, thank that's, you. that's thank great. You thank you. Really well, awesome. and I, I want to thank everybody on the panel. Uh, you guys give your time every week to be here, and we greatly appreciate it. Facebook I uh, and Zoom, I, you know, everyone here is giving their time, uh, their knowledge uh, for, for all of our viewers. So, you know, give them a round of applause or...
handshakes as we do in some of the Zoom areas. Um, and, uh, you know, thank you guys. It, without you guys, the show doesn't happen. And without you viewers, uh, you know, we wouldn't be here. So thank you all. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to Facebook land. So everybody give Facebook a wave. Good night. Uh, Good night. Uh, somebody in Sweden said it's 3.20 in the morning there. So thank you for, for tuning in, Lars, from Sweden. We appreciate that. Uh, and with that, we'll see you guys next week.